Welcome guys, gals, and non-binary pals to another episode of Cult of Comics, the podcast where we talk comic books, comic books related media, and everything in between. Uh, I am your host, Tyler Brown. Uh, you're here joined today with Sean Walsh. Sean? Hello. How are we doing? It's gone. I am dead inside. Tired. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. And our good friend Josh. How you doing, man? Howdy. Hey, hey howdy. Hey now. <laughs> How you doing, bud? Ma'am? Not too bad. Not doing all, you're doing okay there? Yeah. I don't know why we defaulted let's to this. But let's, do our, let's do our best boom hour voice. Now, 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 man, man. Oh, come on, man, now. now man, shoot. Man, man. Yeah. <laughs> come on, man. Just trying to come on. Yeah. Reading comics. comics. Com shame. <laughs> <laughs> sure is a I lot really... of shame in reading comics. <laughs> I really hope that Sean has never seen an episode of King of the Hill and has no idea what's happening. <laughs> oh, King of the Hill. Just, okay. like, thinks... <laughs> I was, I was See, lost. that just made it better. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we kind of figured. Okay, okay uh all right uh well again welcome to the podcast uh so uh it is sunday uh what day is today it's the 24th january 24th 2021 uh the year mm -hmm. keeps rolling on and a couple things have happened in the world uh we're gonna jump right ahead into uh news first because apparently there's been some news within the last 24 hours that's actually pretty yeah. uh interesting to see um are you guys familiar with the heroes reborn event that's coming up no. So this is news to me as well. Um, Heroes Reborn, we, it's been kind of announced previously that with the, the Jason Aaron run of Avengers um, dealing with the Phoenix tournament right now, uh, there's going to be a Phoenix rebirth, basically, uh, happening, uh, which is kind of funny because I feel like Marvel gave DC a lot of shit when they did rebirth. Uh, but they're doing another Heroes Reborn. Heroes Reborn was originally an old event from the 90s. Uh, that stemmed from uh, a couple of comics titles. It was Fantastic Four, Iron Man, uh, Avengers, uh, and Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Avengers, and Thor? Something like that. Um, but the event that we rolled out of that was primarily focused on um, retelling the, sta the, the stories, the tales of some of the famous uh, Marvel characters. Uh, but in a new setting, kind of like what Bendis did with uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, except this was not good. <laughs> um, the Heroes Reborn storyline was extremely short-lived. Um, I think the only thing that was interesting that came out of it was uh, Mark Wade's Fantastic Four run uh, with Jim Lee. Um, the Avengers storyline that came out of it was the famously weirdly drawn story of Rob Liefeld's Avengers, which has that extremely dis disproportionate Captain America. That's a meme everywhere. Now, um, the heroes reborn storyline, looking at it now with the teasers that have come out is really interesting. Um, so you've got a feature, uh, you've got agent Coulson, uh, in one image. Uh, I've sent it into the chat, by the way, for you to look at as well. Um, who looks like he's running for a, political office of some kind maybe presidency um you've got hulk on a planet of some kind out, uh, out in space battling monsters it looks like uh one of the more traditional uh styles of hulk art by carlos pacheco you've got uh juggernaut doom uh which is really interesting because it looks like uh doom has the bands of sidorak and he's got some pretty uh pretty metal doom <laughs> fists on each hand like they stay doom with the Sidorak uh bands and he's got the gem sitting in the chair you've got logan looking like he gained a lot of muscle and then gave up and lost all of it and now has a lot of adamantium sticking out of different Ooh. parts of his body uh also art by carlos pacheco Let's see here. This looks like it is the uh, Canadian team Alpha Flight. Uh, and we've got um, some of the traditional teams as well. Um, I can never remember this guy's name. He controls plants, but I always thought that guy was uh, really cool. Um, Sasquatch. Uh, a newer version of uh, what looks like a robotic Captain Canuck. But I'm, I'm assuming that that must be the... Uh, one of the original uh, teammates. What the hell is that guy's name? Help me out here, guys. I have no idea. Which one? Um, so go into the chat. Look at it. It's uh, the guy with the Canadian symbol on his body. Um, 
Captain this, Canada. These were all ca- not Captain Canada, but um, Guardian, maybe? The Maple Or was it Vindicator? Man. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's either Guardian or Vindicator, something like that. But then you got North Star, uh, newer North Star in the corner over there as well. Uh, what's his name? Shaman, that's his name. Shaman is sitting in the uh, uh, top right corner over here looking like Doctor Strange. So, I mean, it looks like it's a, a Canadian lineup that's going on here, North which I'm actually really yeah. for because this looks really interesting. It looks like a different take on what's going to happen. But um, my confusion here is that this looks like... The implication here is that this is a different universe, much in the same way that Heroes Reborn in the 90s was as well. Uh, which, basically, when that happened, it was Counter-Earth is what they called it, I think. Um, and that's kind of how they justified the timelines not really making any sense. Because they did the short-lived Heroes Reborn storylines and then Heroes Return. And then they were like, oh, that was just Counter-Earth. That was just like a rebirth moment. And then they came right back. Because for a little while, um, those heroes were gone and nobody knew where the hell they were i think it was in the 400s issues of spider-man that they uh kind of deal with the effects of having those really big name heroes missing from the lineup um in this next photo you've got a picture of uh peter parker on top of the daily bugle taking a picture of somebody flying off of the roof it looks like Uh, maybe spider woman with the yellow boots if oh i thought those were green no yeah i think you're right i think that would make sense okay then you've got Richards and Grimm, so obviously two of the founding members of the Fantastic Four, but they're wearing S.H.I.E.L.D. outfits. Uh, and Grimm is noticeably not, not the thing. thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Thanos, looking kind of traditional. You know, he's got all of the... Whoa, hang on a second. Oh, that's interesting. Look at the look at the gauntlet. They're not stones, they're rings. The rings. Yeah, they are. Ooh. It That's like very the rings fascinating. From, uh, Zelda. I was gonna say that they maybe can we think of the rings from Iron Man's opponent. Oh, um, the ten rings. Yeah, Mando- but Man- the the Mandalorian, Falls. the Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Mandarin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I don't think is the case, but this looks like an interesting take on it. And then this is the one that really is confusing me. So this is an image uh, that says "Heroes Reborn Wanda." So clearly. Quicksilver. That's what I'm trying to say. Is it's yeah. a combination of both. She oh, okay. she she ate Pietro in the womb. Yeah, basically that's room. what it looks like. I thought it kind of looked like uh, the Enchantress. Oh yeah, I can see that. But it, I definitely think this is like a she's the Quick Witch or something. This witch. is weird. Quitch the Quick Witch the Quitch Quidditch. It always comes back to Harry Potter in the end. It always does. Um, so this has uh, apparently been announced by Marvel posing the question, whatever happens to Earth's Mightiest Heroes? Following up that... Uh, uh, sorry, following up the uh, release of these teasers offering glimpses to this. So it looks like this might be a kind of fun, like, what if uh experiment that they seem to be doing uh based on the counter earth idea i'm wondering if they're going to bring the counter earth um over to the universe and have that tie into a conflict of the 616 or something interestingly um captain america that's what it was it was avengers captain america fantastic four and iron man that's what it was i was zoning out for some reason this looks weird but I mean, I'm interested in the Logan one, mostly. Uh, I really want to see what they do with Alpha Flight. I feel like Alpha Flight is a cast of characters that really doesn't get a whole lot of do, but I really like them. I'm intrigued by the Doom Juggernaut one. They always pop up with uh, any long run of Wolverine. A long one, sure. Sasquatch has been in the Immortal Hulk runner lately, and he had a very interesting series of events happen to him. If you notice in the picture with him, though, he looks more demonic than usual. He's got claws instead of fingers. He's got horns. Oh, the uh, Wendigo? Doing... Oh, do you think that he's a combination of the Wendigo and Sasquatch? I, I thought he looked more like Wendigo, but yeah. No, you know what? Now that you say that, that actually would make a lot of sense, considering the history with Logan. 
Yeah. I would say that that's a combination of the two characters. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Wait a minute. Does Shaman... Is Shaman actually wearing Doctor Strange's cloak? That is Doctor Strange's cloak, right? It looks like it, yeah. That has to be it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look this up right now. Doctor Strange's cloak. That has to be it. Because that looks unique. All I'm seeing really is the pictures of Benedict Cumberbatch's uh, cloak. So I'll try... <laughs> comic. That absolutely is his cloak. That is absolutely his cloak. That's like, even. Oh I my mean, god! Wonder Woman took the Green Lantern ring and the bat, uh, the uh, bat belt, the utility belt. Let's get you know somebody to take, you know, some like materials from different. Yeah. I will say this: the Eye of Agamotto is not there. It's not present. No, it's just so it's, it's just the cloak of Le levitation. That's it. Which, by the way, I just want to say that's such a really like that's just such a little touch with Doctor Strange's character that I've always loved. But I this is interesting. Also, if you notice, North Star is a woman, or at least feminine presenting, and is carrying a barbed bat. Blue seal. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm whatever this is, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm buying that just because of like how that looks to me. Okay, I don't. Do you see that I don't picture know what to... of the uh, enchantress that I posted to the chat? Yes. No, I haven't. That looks a lot like the. Uh, it is Starlight very Christmas. similar. Yeah. I, I think they're doing like mashups of different characters, so I would definitely bet it'd be like a mashup of like Sasquatch. And the Wendigo. I, I really wouldn't be surprised by it, but it just it strikes me as a very strange Who would choice. Wolverine be combined with? I, I mean, each of the Wolverine with. Uh... He's got uh, extra long claws. Well, he does. For his wrists. It's not just that. You can also see them through his forearms and yeah, a little bit up top. Uh, maybe he has been mixed with o Omega Red. Yeah, maybe or dead maybe some sort of cyborg, maybe some sort of cyborg or something. I mean, it definitely looks like this is tied to some of his history with the Weapon X program, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, Guardian. So the the guy with the maple leaf is Guardian. He could be doing like some Guardian Iron Man mashup. Maybe. I mean, so there has also been some Russian characters that look like that uh, that are called like the Red Stars and whatever, or yeah. maybe that was DC, but. Yeah, that's I don't DC know. With oh, the, I don't know. There's, um, you know, with the uh, Black Red Widow coming out. Whoever's... Yeah. Omega Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. This is very interesting. I feel like the thing I'm more confused about is the fact that both Hulk and Thanos are both kind of just regular in this presentation. I Other just feel like there's the not rings. a whole lot going on. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, someone said yeah. Guardian Vindicator crossed with maybe like Cable. Oh, interesting. I mean, re regardless, the uh, other Earth idea that seems to be happening here is... Seems, I'm for it. I mean, it's fun. It seems interesting. I guess I'm just more confused about what purpose does this bring. I mean, if this isn't going to be something they're bringing into the 616, I guess I'm curious about what they would... What's the benefit of doing this other than for a marketing ploy to sell some... What well, that's, that's stuff. absolutely the reason. That's the only reason. But, I mean, is this really the time to be doing that necessarily? I mean, with the lack of movies coming out right now uh, with the uh, hype for the next Spider-Man movie coming out. Uh, yeah, but and possibly... Disney has been hemorrhaging money during the pandemic, yeah. so they're like, oh, a cash grab. Oh, I'll take maybe it. not. May yeah, maybe. I hope not, but... I don't, I don't... They haven't been, like, losing that much money. Oh, they have. I wouldn't say that. What do you mean? What have they been... Like, do tell. They've been losing, like, billions a day or billions a week due to... Uh, the parks have been hemorrhaging money because they've been closed. I mean, it's Disney. Parks, I'm fairly right. certain they can afford it. I don't know. Maybe this is like a tease of like things we might see in uh, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, or any of the uh, other forms we might see. I mean, I would be really surprised if that was the case. I feel like this is probably tying into that Counter-Earth thing, like I was saying. But then the other question is... I understand that this is the 25th anniversary of Heroes Reborn with Jim Lee and everything, but I guess I just don't really understand 
what's the selection of doing that here? Because it wasn't that successful of a campaign. It was extremely short lived. Is it fun? Sure. Who not? Who knows? I mean, I've seen a lot of titles come out that were just a lot of fun. I mean, the King in Black uh, Namor storyline with Kurt Busiek was a lot of fun. Well written. I'm enjoying it. It kind of surprised me. But I, I guess I'm just saying that of a choice to focus on something that isn't going to be more impactful to the main universe or storytelling experience. Is this like their way of trying to compete with Reborn, with Black Label? Because I feel like if they're going to do Counter-Earth storylines, that's cool. I just want to know if this is like their their competition with Elseworlds or whatever. Because to me, What If was always that. But then they oh, stopped putting those. it out. Those Who doesn't? So much fun. What if are, they're so much fun? And sometimes There's, they go. The stakes are higher in that because, you know, people can actually die. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Disney made a loss of $6.9 billion. Yeah, that's nothing. Year. That's a drop. In that's n- fuck you. <laughs> That's one that's day a, of Mickey Mouse that's training. A, that's, that's a rounding only, error. That's only three Avengers movies. They can get that back. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. They they have made quite a bit of profit from it. I mean, yeah. Well, moving on with uh, the news. Uh, I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but Aquaman Earth 1 uh, was announced at some point with Francis Manipal, but that's been yeah. canceled and is now currently dead uh, because Francis Manipal has... Uh, ended his contract. His contract has come to uh, its timely end with DC, and he's said that he's pretty swamped and overwhelmed with other projects right now. Whether that means personal projects or Marvel projects, maybe even Dark Horse, who knows? Uh, We don't know right now. All we know is that the Aquaman Earth 1 storyline and book has been cancelled right now. Uh, And... It's a shame because... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, so all those people that said that this was the final issue of Aquaman were correct. What do you mean? This is a that... graphic novel release. It's not a. It's not part of the ongoing oh. series. All right. I don't think they see them all as separate, but there were articles back in what November, or December, saying this is the final issue of Aquaman. There's no more. Oh uh, well, they've been saying. I don't know why they hate on Aquaman so hard. They keep saying that they're like, oh, this is it. They're getting canceled again. And it's like, well, they're just getting another creative team. Don't get me wrong. They've been canceled multiple times. Aquaman is one of the most canceled uh, DC characters, but. <laughs> But yeah, this is a shame because it would Manipal's art is gorgeous, and seeing him paint Atlantis would have been incredible. <sighs> yeah, that would have been really cool to see. Um, I I hope he does more sort of high profile work because he's an artist I have been following for years. Absolutely, and we'll we'll pick up whatever he does next. So. I f- I feel like. Um his art that was seen in the Scott Snyder Justice League storyline of Drowned Earth was gorgeous. I don't think it was like the best story I've ever read, but the art was fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Um, but his Flash run was great for what it was. And did you ever <laughs> read his Trinity at the beginning of Rebirth? Uh, no, but I've heard good things. Well, I've heard mixed things, but... Yeah, it... I, I don't know. The first arc was good. And his sure. artwork in issue one and two was phenomenal. It was sure. really, really good. Yeah, he had to this... like, drop off the book because he had like personal issues. I think his sister died. No, and... she was murdered. Oh, okay. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah, so he was going through a lot, so he had to drop off the book. So it sort of was had a rushed ending and didn't really wrap up as well as it would have. Well, I shouldn't was... say that... Um she was murdered because the, the the basis of where I got that information was from his social media. And there was, I a, do, there was I do period... remember she went missing or something. I don't remember the whole for story. a while. Yes. Yeah. It was a whole thing. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to speculate on someone's, uh, loss like that. So don't, don't quote me on that. If I remember someone saying that she was murdered, I have not confirmed that. So I apologize if that's not incorrect information. Um, I'm just basing that off of what I have read so far. I haven't looked that much uh, further into it. All I know is that he experienced a serious loss, and that took some time away from him. Um, I'm surprised, honestly, that he was able to bounce back so hard because I feel like I would have taken a longer uh, time for that. Yeah, I guess it's part of it's just sort of throwing yourself into your work to distract yourself, maybe. That that would make a lot of sense, uh, yeah. especially when you experience something like that. Yeah, kind of the same thing with like Zack Snyder when his daughter commits suicide. Uh, shortly after that, obviously, he had to step away, but he did come back. You know, now he's coming back even harder with the announcement that uh, the Snyder Cut Justice League is no longer going to be a four-episode miniseries. It's going to be four hours long. 
which uh, I'm looking four, forward to four the hour drinking session while I watch it. Four hour drinking session. Oh yeah, <laughs> party time. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Um, I think that I'm really looking forward to the announcement that Snyder is going to be making the four hour long cut into a six hour long cut, and then into a ten hour long cut, and then eventually into a uh, week long uh, movie event. It's gonna. They're gonna add in an AR component. Altered reality, like where you're involved. Yeah, you can experience Ray Fisher telling you about the racism he's experienced it firsthand. Like, uh, something the, from the uh, racism. Either uh, I'd say like Tropic Thunder, or uh, maybe something from like BoJack Horseman, where it starts out as a movie and then retooled and retooled, and eventually it's just like a ride or a card game. <laughs> <laughs> So what's going on with uh, the Ray Fisher deal right now? I know that he announced that there was a uh, audio file on his Twitter feed. Yeah, I think. he he released an audio file and it was it was weird. It it didn't clear anything up. It was the investigator saying, "Oh, you're a stand-up gentleman, Ray. Thank you for your involvement in this case." But it sure. doesn't it doesn't sort of give any clarification happened, on his like, accusations. Hey, people aren't telling me I'm full of shit, kind of thing. Mm. Someone yeah, saying well, it didn't say anything. Weird. It was literally just. The investigator, I sh- like, there's no proof that this was a real investigator, I should say. Yeah. It's just an audio recording of a woman telling him, oh, thank you for being a stand-up guy during this investigation. Mm-hmm. So it's... I feel... I, I feel like... Um, I guess I'm just confused about why he hasn't, like, made it more clear about what's 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 happened. He's said, like, insinuatory uh, and declarative things, but... Yeah, he's made I vague think accusations. It's weird to keep it all hidden. Like, I wonder if there's something that he's benefiting from. Like, do you think that he's waiting until he can take it to court or something? Maybe. But can he take it to court? I don't know. I I mean, based on, like, what I know about the law, I mean, it's very limited what I know, but, I mean, just from what I've seen, it seems like with an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, there is certain things that can break that uh, agreement and that contract when someone breaks the law. Yeah, when it puts you in a state that uh, causes you to break the law, or the law has been broken against you, um, if harm has come your way and you have the legal right to declare uh, rep- recompense, um, I mean, there's ways that you can get around it. So yeah, but saying that Jeff Johns threatened his career, yeah, is illegal. That's a yeah, absolutely is. So, so he, he could come out and say this is exactly what Jeff Johns said, but he didn't. He said. A veiled threat was made against his career by Jeff Johnson. That could mean anything. That could this mean is the if problem. you don't play ball, you like your struggle to yeah, work. Absolutely. It's such absolutely. A vague accusation. The um the other issue is that Jeff Johns hasn't responded to this for some reason. And that really doesn't make me feel comfortable with that. Cause I love Jeff Johns' work, but I'm wondering why he's being so silent about this. I get why WB would be doing this. Because WB is you know, a co- a corporation. They're shady. They're they're gonna make these decisions to benefit themselves of course i mean don't get me wrong if if they put out a good product i'm gonna buy it but that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm happy about the fact that they could be doing something horrible like this but i think in a lot of these situations the people don't tend to comment on it they do sometimes but sometimes but i mean when you have one person so far yeah but if he came out and actually said like oh this happened to me jeff johns come out say that's false it didn't happen but when sure. it's such a veiled, vague thing yeah. he's insinuating, it's hard maybe, to the, to. maybe his lawyers just told him it's best just to stay quiet on this because there's no actual accusation there. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's just interesting that this is progressing the way that it has, uh, especially with the the claims that get against Walter Hamada, where he said that uh, he un- so originally Ray Fisher announced that he was no longer going to be working with. Uh, uh, is it Hamada or Hamida? I don't know. Hamada? I don't know. So he has announced that he's no longer going to be working with him because accountability is more important than entertainment, which he's been saying in all of his Twitter feeds. Uh, and then it was announced that he wasn't going to be coming back for the Flash movie. And then Ray Fisher says that this was like a response because of hostility. But then the, there was people responding and saying, you already declared that you weren't going to work with him. So, yeah. I mean, is this really a surprise? There's also been an investigation that well, was I mean, private. He's carrying through with his threat. Or, I mean, you know, yeah. Keeping to what he said. He said, I'm not going to work with them. Okay, this person's on here. I'm not going to work with them. 
Yeah, I mean, he's following through with that, and then WB it, responded yeah. and said, okay, well, then you're not on the film. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's, I don't know how many investigations have been done. I know that there was a private investigation. Yeah, I and think there, there was two. There was an independent there, one and a Warner Bros. one. Yeah, so I feel like if it's already been done and dealt with, according to these private investigators and according to the... Um, WV investigations that an intermediary response was done, I think is what they said. Um, basically meaning that they, they have already dealt with uh, the fallout that they need to take care of. But we're still kind of just left in the hanging open. I don't really understand what's going on. Don't get me wrong. Again, if something happened, I want there to be justice done, Absolutely. of course. Yeah. I just don't understand why this is becoming such a long, drawn-out process it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me somebody did point out to us recently that the cost of being a black man in hollywood is dealing with this and i think that's fair but i guess i just don't i'm not going to be able to comment on what it's like to be a black person or and especially one in hollywood which is famously racist i guess i'm just looking from the outside looking in and trying to figure out what's going on i don't know but uh, moving on from that, there is some really, really good news for everybody who's a comic book fan. Saga's coming back, baby! Yeah! It's been Ooh. fucking announced! Maybe. Kinda. They didn't no, it has been confirmed! Well, I mean, his, his comment said we're working on it, but he didn't exactly say soon. I will read what the, uh, uh statement says. Uh, so at the Instagram post, um... It was announced on Friday. Happy Friday, Scrollers. Recently, legendary comics creator Bob Wiacek, who inked some of my favorite images ever, including the cover to Uncanny X-Men 210, easily the most badass thing my 10-year-old self had ever seen, has been dealing with some costly health issues. Enter editor extraordinaire uh, S. Dunbeer, uh, who offered to help raise some funds for Bob by auctioning off the only existing script of an unpublished Gen 13 annual by our greatest living writer, Alan Moore, with Mr. Moore's generous permission, of course, which I really appreciate him doing. And guess with aging fanboy used... Which aging fanboy used some of his ill-gotten Hollywood blood money to acquire this important piece of comics history? The unfinished story, still over 35 pages long, is a sharp, surreal satire of X-Men, Teen Titans, and the entire industry of that era. And Moore puts more thought into each of his panel descriptions than most of us put in entire, into our entire series. Anyway, rather than hoarding this lost treasure in my BK vault, haha, I thought I would share it with those of you who are kind enough to donate any amount to Bob Wiechik's GoFundMe page, link in the bio, Please just forward your donation receipt to his email. Thanks for helping bobw at gmail.com. And my correspondence, Wiener Dog Hamburger K. Vaughn, <laughs> will eventually send you back a private link to a scan of the script for your personal reading pleasure. Thanks so much for whatever you can do to help, and I hope everyone is staying safe and sane out there. P.S. And just to head off the comments, yes. Fiona and I are still hard at work on Saga, and we remain hugely appreciative of the four of you left who haven't completely lost patience with our extended intermission. Hard to believe, as it may seem, I promise these new issues will be worth the wait. That's fantastic. I'm very excited about this. So, yeah. that could be just hyperbolic. He could be saying, hey, we could just get started on it, but you know what? The announcement means a lot to me because I've been a longtime fan. I've bought three or four issue number ones in my time and sometimes i've sold them sometimes i've kept them but i've been i've been waiting for this to come out man and i will say this of comic books that are out there saga to me is the one that stands out universally as one that you could get anybody involved in people who never read comics love saga people who have uh only ever collected comics one comic in their time most of the most of the time to me is saga Every single time I've ever met somebody who ever talks about any slight knowledge of the industry, Saga comes up in conversation. And I'm baffled at the amount of people who are brought together by this book. So bringing it I back... I have never read Saga. You are a You're a liar. person. You're a liar. <laughs> You're right. I can't I've, see you. I've read the first issue. Okay. You're full of ago. shit. It's a space You're full of shit. Opera. You're full of shit. I can't Who see doesn't... your face right now, so I have no idea how much bullshit you're spouting right now, my guy. Who doesn't like a space stop soap opera? Space it was something not... I intended to binge and then just never got around to. And I Are you gonna... fucking kidding me? You've never read Saga. No. 
I'm looking. Josh is literally like, oh god. Oh, I'm, I'm just I'm... backing away. I'm trying to back away from the sound, but you're in my ears. So it doesn't <laughs> Sean, Sean, I hate to tell you this, but you're kicked off the podcast. Okay, okay cool. I'm good. All right, bye. And then there were two. And on that note, we're going to head out here. All right, guys, it's been fun. It's been a fun four episodes, but we're going to head out now. Four. All right, eventually I'll see you in the other world. Who has a, what? Who has a red saga? <laughs> I brought it. How are you on a comics podcast and you never read saga? Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Look what you, you should done. be sorry. Look what you made him do. Son of a... Welcome back after our shortly lived ad break, uh, where I am composed. We are back together. We are here. And we're going to finish up the little bit of news left, which is really simple. Uh, Miles Morales is going to get his own clone saga. And Marvel has announced a new lineup for the Guardians of the Galaxy team, uh, which is going to feature Hulkling and Wiccan. Uh, possibly some new cast members are going to join up, but uh, we're not quite sure yet. Al Ewing is still doing the storyline, which was very cool. Very well written. Uh, I hopped off it personally uh, because I just kind of ran into some back issue issues, but back issue issues, that's funny, huh? But I'm hoping to get Pat caught back up again. Uh, it looks like uh, with Carmen Canero on the credited artist for the Miles Morales run coming up soon of Clone Saga, uh, it's probably going to tie into more of the uh, Jackal storyline, I'm assuming, but the photo credit looks interesting. It's Who's Jackal? Jackal? It's Jackal. Jackal. It's Jackal. It's a jackal. It's a jackal. Jackal? It's a jackal. Jackal. Sean, and that's it with the news, as far as I'm aware. Sean? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. He, he zoned out with me yelling at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, shaking and crying from... <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> I said, have you ever watched Family Guy? Have I ever watched Family Guy? Yes. Yes, okay. I have. That's right. the who jackal? Hasn't, who hasn't watched Family Guy? Who hasn't read Saga? Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, so you brought this on yourself. Yeah, Moving on from there, uh, we are now done with the news. What's no, next up on the 7? No, we're not. No, we are not done so, with news. Why? What happened? I sent you a list of news earlier. You've not covered anything on that. Oh, no. Did we skip the Godzilla vs. Kong? Or did I zone out as well? I skipped that because I didn't think that that was like too pertinent to comics. I just wanted to share that because I thought it was cool. Okay. Okay, let's move over to my news now since you don't seem to want to address it. Uh, we had a new... It's not, Im... it's not on my on my uh, screen for some reason. It's I thought you pulled fault. it off, that's why. No. no. Um. So we've got a new image series, The Silver Coin, announced which oh, is a yeah, horror right. anthology by Chip Zdarsky. I posted that. Um, Jeff Lemire, uh, Kelly Sue, not Kelly Sue, uh, Kelly Thompson, and Ed Brisson. And I've written a surname down, but I don't remember the it's first It's like name. a magazine. Yeah. This horror anthology by some of the industry's hottest creators. So what should be fun. I'm going to check it out. I'm a fan of Zdarsky. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like someone looked at Ice Cream Man and said, hey, we can do that. Anthologies are definitely making a really strong comeback at this point. It's kind of interesting yeah. to see. Mm -hmm. And it's refreshing to see as well, because there's some really good content in them. I think it was right yeah, there really to is. try something new. I will say this. I feel like I heard a criticism fairly recently when it comes to stuff like uh, Ha Ha being... I felt like you could have uh -huh. included that story in Ha Ha as <laughs> just another story. Ha <laughs> Ha! in ice cream man but they just decided not to do that which is yeah, interesting if... there's a there's a theme yeah i mean yeah but <laughs> yeah a big thing in the first issue wasn't ice cream so it was a clown yes i guess i'm just saying that they could have incorporated the theme into the plot and it still would have been relevant i guess i'm just curious yeah, we, what the choice it depends is. it depends where it goes next because we've got five issues left and they could go further down the clown rabbit hole that's fair Okay. Um, so this next one isn't really comic book news, but No Time to Die, the James Bond movie, has been pushed back again to October next year, or this year even. We're in twenty twenty one now. I'm not Ghostbusters. Surprised. Time time is a pre COVID construct. I don't yeah. follow time. Yeah, Ghostbusters but... movie was also pushed back. Oh, oh yeah, uh... I forgot about that. I'm not gonna lie, I just don't really care. 
I think yeah. looking forward to that. Hey, I everyone mean, loves Paul Rudd. Yeah. I do love Paul Rudd. I hope that I age the way that he does. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm. You already look older. <sighs> I got some grays older, going on already, and I'm not liking than five it. Five minutes ago. Get fucked. <laughs> Paul Rudd just drains the life force from other people. He's got like, I... several blood boys. Yeah. <laughs> he is a blood vampire. boys. What's a blood boy? You don't know what blood boys are? It's what no. Keeps the queen... It's what keeps the queen alive. <laughs> what are you talking about? What's a blood, a blood boy? A blood transfusion from a you know fit younger man. This sounds like a weird sex conspiracy, <laughs> conspiracy theory. Do you ever watch uh, <laughs> like Silicon Valley or anything? Uh, no, I never had the chance to. Okay. Don't just leave me hanging. Elaborate, you fuck. Yeah, no, I, that's what I said. It's he a drains blood, the blood. Transfu- Yeah, it's a blood transfusion from someone that's young and fit. You get the good blood. He's, he's a vampire. To replace the bad blood. You're yeah. so strange. Do you know what? Do you know um, Elizabeth Bathory? No. Okay. Let's pretend like so, I don't. I'm just gonna pre- I'm gonna warn everybody right now. This is a really dark historical fact. Um, the history of vampires actually stems from Elizabeth Bathory, uh, and this is actually completely true. She was a psychopath who used to take young women, typically around the age of 13, yeah, hang them up by thing. chains yeah. and hooks drain them of their blood into a bathtub and then bathe in their blood so that way she could maintain air quotes her youthful complexion yeah that's all kind of mixed into the you know dracula vampire story yes and let's be honest which one of us hasn't done that to a 13 year old whoa that's that's a clip that is going to be taken way out of context (laughs) sir that is just a bad little little clip chimp that you got there i'll cut out yeah, oh, that can be taken God. out very badly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. I'm um, noticing that there is a, a new thing that you wanted to talk about for uh, DC's thing a thing. Thing a thing. What? Go ahead. The reboot. Oh, yeah. HBO Max are rumored to be rebooting the Batman animated series. Oh, it's only rumored? Or yes, they just uploaded I believe the so. series. Well, they uploaded the series onto the channel or the the app, but they haven't uh, confirmed the reboot, right? I'm just double checking that, but I don't think uh, Kevin Smith said a Warner Bros. source have told him they're looking to reboot. Or okay, HBO we're Max. looking to That's squeeze a little bit of money out of this. Yeah, they realized the um, franchise wasn't completely dead, and they could get a bit more out of it. Let's see what Bruce Tim has to, to say. That. Ugh. Well, Bruce Tim seems to be really tied to a lot of these films don't get me wrong i love his art style but goddamn, i mean i just not gonna forgive him for that uh killing joke movie yeah or the um batman harley movie Ugh. well Ugh. well no he needs he needs paul dini to rein him in which is weird because i feel like paul dini needs other people to rein him in so yeah. maybe they rein each other in i don't know maybe um Josh, you posted this uh, Polygon article that I thought was really cool uh, with regard to the old guard. Yeah, yeah. So they're coming up with another anthology series with several different another artists. One. Yeah. Another one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm down for anything old guard related. I don't need to read the um, second series. I read the first one and loved it. And just Yeah. Did you watch the movie? I did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've basically read the second series. They combined yeah. <laughs> the two series into one movie. I, yeah, but the problem is that there's so much that was missed in the movie, mm. and I feel like the movie was not really well done. I'll disagree with that. I liked it. I did not. I felt like it took the ideas and the premises of the series, and then they were just like, let's all just lump it all into one big messy storyline that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, and then an ending that really doesn't pertain to the original comic book at all. Yeah, I kind of agree, but I still think it was a... It How was can a... you agree when you didn't even read the second series? You don't know. Ooh, called out. Fair enough. Start some I, beef, I've not, go. I've not read Saga, though, so what do I know? Yeah. You anyway, don't know it's shit. A, uh, it's a new six-issue anthology miniseries <laughs> starting in April. So we're going to get basically six one-shots exploring the lives of these characters. So uh, let's see. I got a couple of these i love these I mean, covers it yes looks like i gonna do like a stretch cover like all the covers will really well there's that really wide picture about a third of the way down the article uh-huh 
I think that's going to be like an alternate cover. I really like that when The Walking Dead did it for it was like the mid 130s or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was had, it was all out war, wasn't it? Yeah, something the like Nikon that. The Nikon one, yeah. Yeah, and they had the five or six issues that just all connected into one big page. Yeah. Uh, it's cool when series I'll, do that. This is interesting. Bendis is doing a story with Michael Avon Oming. Uh, yes. Huh, okay. Bendis and I'm a... Uh, yeah. uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick is doing a story as well. Delano oh, yeah, Pro. I saw that. I'm definitely yeah. on that, of course. Dela Ooh, Rucka Delano. is doing his own with Fernandez. Okay. Did you see that there is a... Uh, Jac Jacopo Camani uh, image uh, yeah. for issue number one. Yeah, let's tell uh, let's tell what's his face Tavris about that because <laughs> he likes Noman Omen. I feel like this is a smart move on their behalf because I mean Rucka has said that he maybe wanted to do one more series and then that's it because he doesn't want to get tired of something. But mm -hmm. yeah, he said there was a third series, but sort of wrap it up. And I think. Uh, it would do nice if they included some red in this. It'd be like the uh, the Wolverine, <clears throat> black and white and blood. Mm. I red. feel like that kind of would go against the original theme of the art style um, with uh, Fernandez, but yeah. I see what you're saying. I just see the uh, two panels of... Uh, which one is that? Joey living in the uh, woods. From Friends? Yeah, Joey from Friends. <laughs> he's got, he caught a rabbit. Now it's just he's gonna go gonna go ham on it. I'm now just imagining like of mice and men, Joey, like with the rabbits. <laughs> Chan Channel is just there shooting him in the head. See, I, I you have a better one than me. I have a visual of Joey from Friends going, "How are you doing?" and then just viciously eating and biting no, it's just into him the throat saying, of a rabbit. I'm not even sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even sorry. Oh, and he's got the blood all over his face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I hate that I That's know that incredible. show so well. Oh God. Okay. I, I really hope uh, when WandaVision gets to like the ninety sort of era, I really hope it sort of pays homage to Friends because no, that's, like, that's only, a show I know. The only thing I want is a uh, reference uh, to Full House. Yeah, a Full House opening. Just the opening. I think that that would be good. Uh, anyway. I agree. I agree. Is that all for the news? Can we transition no, to talking no, no, about not, WandaVision? Not yet. Not That's yet. all for the news, apparently. No. Um, so Strange Adventures by Tom King, Mitch Gerrards, and Doc Shainer is now moving to bi-monthly, starting with issue nine. Um, this is because they don't want to take any shortcuts with the art. They've confirmed the scripts are already finished and written, and it's just an art delay. I... Is this really going to be like a thing that we're just going to be like experiencing when it comes to this now is just more Apparently delays and so. delays, I guess. Doomsday, you know, it happened to Doomsday Clock. It happened to Far Sector. And that's happening to this. Okay. Well, I, this was the one, this was the Tom King book, honestly, that I was really uh, enjoying the most, I yeah. think. I'm really enjoying Rorschach still, but I feel like this was... Um... Yeah, this was... It was doing something a little different with like the old saying characters. Mm. But yeah. Like, um, I know Mitch Gerrard has had some health problems. He's had problems with his back, so I don't well, know if that's potentially contributed to it. Maybe. And I mean, Doc Shane I, is a pretty slow artist as it is as well, so I think maybe they just at the beginning. I just they think it's interesting that then suddenly there's like, two artists on this book and they still yeah. need the delays. That that's that's, true, that's telling they're, me quite a they're bit. They're doing half an issue a month. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely something going on. I mean, if, if Garrods has some back issues that he needs to t take some time to focus on, maybe there's some family issues, that's fine. Listen, I'm not going to be the guy policing other people's work. They can do whatever they want. I'm just saying that I'm disappointed. That's it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, okay. Um, so the new CW Superman and Lois trailer dropped. What did we all think? Uh, you know, I... I... Yeah, I mean... I'm surprised that they're doing this, I guess, just because the original Lois and Clark series was a really big hit, you know? <laughs> I, I'm 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 surprised at the quality here. I mm -hmm. mean it's the CW, so I guess it's like I don't know if this You said they were doing it with HBO Max. Yeah, HBO Max is co financing it apparently. So that's why it's got a really? production value than the rest of the CW Weird. shows. I mean it's not like HBO Max has like the highest value 
quality First episodes uh, always get like a good chunk of the budget so I wouldn't be surprised if the you know quality drops just a little bit after the first sure. couple of episodes. Yeah. But compared to like the current CW shows, it does look miles miles ahead. Okay. Um. All right. Streets ahead. Streets ahead. Are you guys? I, I are you guys watching? Uh, are you I'm guys watching other CW stuff? I'm okay. not watching yeah, anything. Yeah. I'm not watching anything at the minute, but I'll probably give the first well, episode. Nothing's out right list. now. No. Yeah. Uh, I still stick with uh, Legends of Tomorrow, Flash. I I really like Legends, but I just sort of fell behind and never caught up. Flash, mm-hmm. Flash went off the cliff. I'm just gonna keep watching it. I'll watch it. it. It's Stockholm Syndrome, isn't it? Yeah, I'll I'm gonna tell you this for, right now. Uh, Green Arrow and the Canaries. I'll wait for that to come out. That's too. been that's, that's canceled. Cancelled. That's cancelled. You shut your mouth. I swear to God. Yeah, it's been cancelled. I swear, it's unfortunate, but I mean, really, the project really never had a whole lot of lift off in the first place. It was just kind of yeah, talked pandemic kind of. Yeah, okay. Well, even January then, they... yeah, yeah an er- a even... year later, and they're like, ah, we're just going to pass. Well, they, they had announced it. It's kind of like what they did for all of the announcements for the DC films, and well, then they just they've... did nothing with it. Uh... By the way, thanks, WB, for fucking me over for the 2020 announcement of the Green Lantern Corps movie. I'm really looking forward to that. Years. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure DC will hear your message. No, they've I will been stringing leave them us message. along all year long. Like we're getting closer and closer to getting Green Arrow and the Canaries figured out. Like they, all year long. Did they, they cast anybody? Um, they did. It was Casey. It was a backdoor um, pilot for the. Uh, yeah, Kate Cassidy the last and of the other person who played Canary on that show. I don't know her name. Julia act- Harkavi. Harkavi. Yeah, and then the right. actress who played their daughter, who was Catherine McNamara. Yeah. I mean. Okay, I will say this: that first like four seasons, well, first three seasons of Arrow, phew, damn good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The show went off a cliff when he did in season three. Um, that's funny. Uh, so it's yeah. been a year since the uh, that episode came out. That was January twenty first, twenty twenty. Did you guys notice that Star Girl is not on HBO Max now? What? I don't have it's, HBO it's Max gone. in the UK, so no, I did not notice. Yeah, I went to go look for it today because of uh, some infighting between friends. And I want to go watch it because I've never seen it, but. Hmm. Weird. I, I enjoyed it. Pause right here. Stop. Uh, can you hear me still? I'm going to. We'll, yeah, we'll I can this hear out. you. Yeah. Is it okay? It was just all crackling yeah. a little bit a minute ago. but it's... It might have been the cable. Okay. okay. Returning. Go ahead. Um. Yeah, Stargirl was fun. It's like, it's a cheesy teen show, but like it did it well whereas like some of the cw shows just sort of weren't good but this it fully embraces <laughs> it's... no it's still how nice can you say it it's like some of it's the cw here. shows can... have gone i kind see it of... pop up for my list from what hbo max i'm telling I you see... i looked it up earlier and it wasn't there i'm staring at it right now i tried looking it up i i searched star girl in the team ups with Star Girl Pilot Stripe Episode Three Icicle Four Wildcat. Well, then I guess I'll just have to go and then look again. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, whatever. Yeah, another big bit of news is Donny Cates has announced his Venom run is ending at issue two hundred. I'm so I'm so mad about this. It'll be okay, buddy. Don't worry. I'm so mad. Hit him move on to something else. It'll be okay. Two uh, look, look. I'm ex- I'm happy that they have been dedicated to this franchise. I'm I'm happy that they've been such big fans with this. But I'm really surprised. They've announced for. They said they. They said at the beginning they were going to be on this project for a long time. And I guess when I picture a long time, I picture, like, I don't know, sixty issues or something. It's only been like thirty five, and then you've got the absolute carnage and King and Black stuff, but. Unless it's going to spin off into like a second Venom series, like whether the story is going to continue into Spider Man or something. Don't get me wrong. If he and if Donny Cates does a Spider Man book, I'm on it ASAP. Yeah. Of course, I think that he'll write the character like, genius. But just because his Venom runs ending here, the story, like it might just still be the first act of the story, because he's kind of built the cos. He's had like a sort of through line through some of his books with like the cosmic side of Marvel. Mm. So maybe he's going to do the same thing with this, where the story sort of continues in a new form in something else. If it's him and Ryan Stegman, 
all the time, I'm into it. I'm for it. Yeah. And I got to say, the story has really maintained its integrity quite a long time. I'm surprised that... I'm, I'm surprised that Donny Cates has received so much recognition the way that he has. And by that, I mean when he got Thor, it was a big shocker to me because that was such a good fit. But it seemed like such a t short time between him doing Thor and him doing God Country. Yeah. Because those two, in my mind, kind of parallel each other. And even Jason Aaron said, yeah, God Country was great. You're going to do fine. But... I, I hope that this is kind of like that. Don't get me wrong. I like Nick Spencer's story arc right now. I like it a lot. I'm just excited for the potential future. Yeah. Um, this is the problem with me is that I get overly excited about the pot potential of things. And then I'm just sitting here and I'm just like, okay, well, what's going to happen next? <laughs> uh, just last thing I wanted to do was shout out all the Bernie memes we've seen this week. It's helped oh, me God. through. It's helped me through the pandemic. <laughs> It is getting a little tired right now, but um, yeah. it's still I, I been the highlight of my them. year so far. Okay, and I'm looking at the uh, list right now. Uh, anything else you want to shout out for news? Yeah, uh, I think that was it. To be honest, cool. Else? Uh, yeah. Do you guys want to get into uh, books? Yes, let's cool. do it. All right. So first up, we have We Live Number 4 by the Miranda Brothers. I didn't get around to reading this. Uh, oh, my shop didn't carry it. You're a terrible person. I know. I'm what? really enjoying this series, too. I really, really... Right. Well, you gotta you gotta go out and get it, because I think uh, issue 5 is probably the last. Interesting. Okay. That's not going to be an confirmed. issue for me. I'm enjoying this, so... Yeah, I haven't seen any solicitations for issue 6. Have we had Aftershock's March solicits yet? I think so. Everyone's putting out their April solicits right now. Uh, March Sorry, just 2020. Um, Take your time. Yeah, because if it is ending at five, that is a shame because it, it has been such a good series. It has been really good. Yeah, there isn't a solicit for We Live Number Five, or oh, Number Six, even. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm looking at the uh, March solicitations right now. That came out uh, the end of December. What? Uh, that's 2020. My bad. <laughs> yeah, I got the 2021 solicits here, and there's been yeah. there's no We Live on there. Yeah, the February 2021 solicits came out end of november so we would have expected that about a month ago to see the march solicits mm. well go ahead and talk about it because i i uh i wanted to read this but i mean i'm not going to be terribly disappointed if there's a lot uh, going on here yes yeah, so yeah, you guys talk about it so go ahead uh you remember at the end of the last issue they sort of got to the train station there are all these like zealots there killing yeah. people so the first sort of half of the issue is them sort of trying to sneak past them and Actually, no, I've skipped something. Yeah, we have this. We have a, yeah, you three page. We have a three page opener of you know this uh, couple just sitting out in the canyon and nowhere on the top of their car talking about their relationship, and then they take some ecstasy, and <laughs> then they fly out of the canyon. Uh, did you ever watch the um, the series? Uh, was that Love, Death, and Robots? Never had the chance to. Okay. Uh, there's an episode in there that reminds me of this because all of a sudden, instead of being in all this of a empty, sudden. instead of, well, they take the drugs and instead of being in this empty canyon, uh, you know, everything goes neon and then they're floating in this ocean full of ancient fish or just mutant fish. Mm. And they fly around or swim around or something and they, you know, fly towards these illuminated gods just larger than life humans that are just beings of light mm -hmm. they say god's going to save us it's not the end and then we get, it's really weird because they say it's like 10 hours to the extinction but it has that beacon in the background yeah i saw that as well and the countdown's at like 238 hours 15 minutes it's probably not 238 minutes. That's still not 10 hours. No. Mm -hmm. I can't make sense of that. 
I think it's just a art mistake. Yeah. And then we go to now, which I assume is, you know, more than 10 hours from the extinction. I don't remember so well uh, how the time's going because we don't see any uh, countdown markers for the rest of the issue. Like they kind of put that in the first issue and they've dropped that since. Hmm. I feel like this story is not i don't know i guess the thing is for me like even just even though i haven't read this issue i feel like what i just want to say about the series is that it's really caught me off guard here i, I feel like for a series that's about you know kids trying to get to somewhere it's really fucking dark but yeah. it does it in such a way yeah. that it's so unique i don't know of, uh, do you ever do you ever watch the uh, anime wolf's reign uh yes actually it kind of reminds me of that because they're you know basically on a journey to get, you know, one person, you know, to a certain location, you know, consequences be damned, you know, we're going to lose people along the way, but as long, you know, the mission is the most, you know, is the most, most important thing. I yeah, yeah, of course. have a big complaint about this book. Uh, ahead, I, there are some weird choices with it that I wish weren't there, like the sort of creatures. So I feel like this, if you take the sort of creatures away, it could be a really good series about survival. But um, yeah. mm -hmm. it just sort of makes it a little too comic booky with that in there. Because mm. towards the end of this issue, we have them get to the capital where they're going to get on the rocket to go to space or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to go back and read the other issues just to. There are these Remember. protests there who are like, oh, they're not letting you get on that rocket. Like they're. Um, stealing the bracelets and selling them to the highest bidders yeah. and like this big sort of riot starts but then all of a sudden like the sort of like mutated creatures show up and start attacking as well yeah it's and like swamp I, thing decided to attack because all the yeah. tree roots come out and i just think without the creatures it could be a much stronger story like if the I... world just started breaking apart you don't need the uh creatures there to tear everyone apart as well yeah because you, you had like this big protest on where they're storming the capital and then suddenly the mon the creatures just show up as well and start attacking. Yeah. I feel like that's a valid criticism if you're looking at it like what works and what doesn't. I think the thing though is that this is a comic book. Yeah. You know, so it can get away with some of the more comic booky things. It um, can, but I just think it could be a lot stronger. Like some of the emotional beats would hit a lot more. Like yeah. if at the beginning, instead of the people taking ecstasy and um, hallucinating these god creatures i think if they killed themselves it could have been a lot darker and a lot heavy hitting like much more yeah, heavy hitting very true because well, the first issue did. started with like that guy you saw him like hanging himself in his home yeah and i think there's some like really heavy moments in this where it does hit really well and then it will sort of do something a bit more comic booky and it sort of takes me out a bit a little bit uh yeah i would i would agree that there are some very comic booky things that happen I They're fun, but yeah. I this mean, is would of... you say the same thing if it was an anime? I haven't read any anime, so I don't know. No anime, like the films, not manga. I haven't really watched any anime. Okay, you've never watched any anime? Probably a little bit, but not a like lot. Dragon so, Ball Z or anything like that. So you've never read Saga, you've never watched anime. Get the fuck out of here! All right, I've, I've All right. seen Avatar: the Last Airbender. That was that's that. That you were fired. Anime. You know, we had the clocks <laughs> counting down to zero, and right here, it's basically like the extinction starts right now. It would have been cool to see that countdown just going to zero right here. Yeah, and it, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to take up that much spot, that that much place. Uh, the countdown could have been sort of seeded throughout the series a lot better. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we get one song for this issue. And it's it's all right, but it's not as good as uh, the songs from like issue three. I forgot to listen to this song actually, so I'm going to need to go back and. Yeah. I feel like the resolution is going to be the thing that determines how this uh, series goes. Um, it doesn't look good. I'm looking at the cover for issue five, and it doesn't look good. Well, I guess what I mean is that something that I heard once was when you're criticizing something criticize what the intent of the creator is and not so much the execution mm -hmm. 
And I feel like that's a valid way of looking at things. Yeah. Um, with the way things are going, I don't expect a very happy ending or any kind of no. Pyrrhic victory or anything like that. But I guess I'm not opposed to that so long as it's well done. Yeah. I, I can't really be the the person who determines what's what determines that's good or not. I think it's just a matter of if it's... I guess it's going back to what, what Sean's criticism is, which is that it takes him out of it a little bit. And yeah. I can respect that. I think the execution and what the intent is, there is. I feel like what you're saying is that the loss there is the emotional aspect. And I think that's a valid criticism. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. if you took the creature out of it, it could be much more like The Last of Us. Wow. Mm-hmm. It is this dark, heavy hit and emotional journey through the world. So bleak and colorful at the same time. <laughs> right, right, right. I am interested in seeing these guys in the future i definitely want to see what kind of works yeah i don't uh, well, i'm not familiar with them i don't know what they've done before but I they've done some things their, here and there yeah this isn't their first thing it Mm-mm. seems like no, they they've, were they've, musicians or something beforehand one of the brothers well, they are musicians in their free time and i think they've done some projects here and there but uh they have done some work for either marvel and or dc oh um, um one of them coffin um, hill yeah one of them hasn't done anything before that woman harley Roy- quinn he was on Batman Beyond at one point. Yeah, Roy sure Miranda this. did nothing. <laughs> this is his first thing. But um Inaki. Yeah, Inaki's been about. As an artist. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I uh I'm sorry I haven't read it yet, this one yet, but I really look forward to it. You should. Yes. Yeah. Get on it. I will, I promise I oh, will. Oh, just another bit of my complaint is do you remember in the previous issue where we had that like mutant person kidnap the kids and it didn't really get explained. Oh yeah. What do you mean? Um, what more wasn't explained? Well just sort of it came out of nowhere and then they just sort of escaped and it was like, okay, that's done. Mm. I feel I like you're that saying that of, just showing I just, off a different sort of part of the world. The, yeah, but it just sort of falls into the same complaint where we get this glimpse of something and it's just kind of different to the rest of the story. And like if you did that with like a group of like people sort of yeah um i mean that's another reason it's kind of anime like yeah is that you jump from somewhat explained thing to somewhat explained thing not exactly knowing it's just there to you know be something different Mm -hmm. i'm looking at the cover right now and it shows i can't i can't remember the kid's name right now any of the character's names well, there's who is who are you? Hototo. <laughs> who am I? And, yeah, I don't know. Tala, Hototo, the kid with the ar- the mechanical arm in his mech. No, yeah, I know which one you're talking yeah. about. I'm yeah, just, I, re- I don't you can't name. really. It's it's not coming through too well right here, but it says always together. And that's oh, just yeah. kind of a oh yeah, because in this issue, in his um, they his partner is his like ape thing. They got split up. Alice. And okay. Because they got on the train, but so did the zealots on like a further down carriage. So they had yeah. to like separate the cart and like the gorilla things or went to fight them off to give them time to escape. Yeah, and he didn't <sighs> want to leave Alice, so he's on that part of the train. Yeah, Alice, they're on the front. It, yeah. yeah, and they're on the front part of the train. So Jeez. Okay. You don't I mean, we don't know if they made it out or not, but right. they're separated. Right. Okay. <sighs> Man, this series is <laughs> dark. Okay. It yeah. is. All right. Yeah, King and Black number three. I remember that issue number down. Yeah, it was three. Yeah, it's uh, issue three. Yeah, mm-hmm. by Donny Cakes and Ryan Stegman. Yep. So this issue was lit, same as all of them. Mm-hmm. I thought this was uh, pretty surprising. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised, but it was a lot of fun to have Thor show up and fuck shit up. Yeah. Thor shows up at the end, and he's the only one who sort of defeated um, Null before. Well, well I he, mean, they kind of had, like... Yeah, it wasn't Null, it was one of the dragons, wasn't it? Well, I mean, they kind of covered it before. You've said before that um, he's been the only person who's really, like, defeated him, but realistically, it's more that he kind of, like, helped banish him. Yeah. And then fought one of the dragons before in the, <clears throat> in the past, and then... The entire basis of Null is built around the Necro Sword from the Jason Aaron, beginning of Jason Aaron's run. Um, yeah, I have read which, that. I don't know if you have. I don't trust your, you anymore. I, I um, yeah, I might not have read Saga, but I've read the God Butcher stuff. 
That was it's a really good run, obviously. Yeah. Those first twelve um, issues are some of the best comics I've read. I can't believe that they let him they let them both get away with just ripping off Null's face. Yeah. In the Marvel was, book. I'm yeah. really surprised. I'm surprised was editorial dark. wasn't it was really bloody. I was impressed. Yeah. Uh this is this is still going in the direction that I kind of figured it would, which is based around issue one, with, you know, uh, focusing more on Dylan rather than on on, on Eddie. But yeah. I'm still really enjoying it. Um, I'm just I really just don't want it to end. Honestly, I don't want this no. to be, uh, you know, ending at 200. But I'm very 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 curious uh, where this is leading up to. Do we know what the legacy numbering is on uh, Venom right now? I can check for you. You can check for me. I think I might not be able to check. You can't check for me. What was the most recent issue? 32. It was like 32. I don't know, my dude. Uh, it looks um, like 33 is... 30, oh, uh, 32 was 197, so there's... Three issues left. Yes. Great. Well... It's been a good ride. I've really, really enjoyed it. I don't want it to end anytime soon, but I mean, okay. All right. Well, so long and thanks for all the fish. All right. I, uh, I'm really excited to see how this is going to, I don't know how to explain it. This is just silly fun. I hate you so much. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really enjoying it still. I, um, yeah, it I, I wouldn't, I would never, I, I would never look at this run and say that this is the pinnacle of, of comics writing, but I definitely am enjoying this immensely. And I'm yeah, enjoying the fact It's a that, great action blockbuster. Yeah, it's a great, I would also say that this is definitely it. Donnie Kate's goal here was to pull Venom out from underneath the shadow of Spider-Man, and I think that he's done a very successful job here yeah, with Ryan Stegman. It's just a shame that um, the next writer who comes in will just put Venom right back in Spider-Man's shadow. Probably. Yeah. Probably. It, it's what um, always happens. A writer comes in and he's like, oh, I'm going to take this character in a new direction. I'm going to take him out from under his shadow. And then the next writer comes in and it's like, right. I yeah. feel like... It's, this is the issue with the same, a lot of the mainstream. Because yeah. do you remember, I got a do you remember what happened? Go ahead. No, I was gonna say um, Tom Taylor's new Nightwing run. He said, "Oh, I'm gonna take Nightwing out from under Batman's shadow. I'm gonna make him his own character." And then, like four years ago, Tim Seeley was saying the same thing about his Nightwing run, the first arc mm -hmm. of which was literally called "Better Than Batman." <laughs> and then. <laughs> Every writer comes in and they're like, oh, I'm going to take him out from Batman's Shadow and I'm going to do this. And then the next writer comes in and has exactly the same outlook. And yeah. Yeah. A lot of these characters. Yeah. I think the it problem is that we're them. not, we're not just dealing with the storyline that is currently in existence. We're also dealing with the perception in the social sphere of yeah. these characters when it's just you a shame picture... that every secondary character just falls back under their shadow. I mean, you can say the same thing about some of the mainstream characters as well. I mean, the perception of Batman constantly being this singular figure who was always hoarding wealth and I work alone when he has the Bat family and now he's broke. I mean, people just don't really pay attention to what's going on. The problem is that when you have the uh, social strings, the, the psychic strings, to use a really bad metaphor connected with each other our ideas of these characters are dependent on the reflection not only of our understanding growing up but also of others so if you tell me yeah. who superman is Su superman is you know clark kent he's got a secret identity what? he grew up on a farm but that's exactly what i was going to tie into is the fact that now that he has revealed his secret identity that's not within the, the sphere uh the realm of the social public sphere you know, mm -hmm. we're constantly dealing with these things. It's the same thing with Spider-Man being always yeah. like unable to save. But with the his next lives. writer, whether it's Philip Kennedy Johnson or the writer after him, is going to come in and put Superman's identity back in the bag. Mm -hmm. Because I hope not. Yeah, but the problem is Superman revealed his identity four years ago or five years ago. Yeah, and then yeah, with the Gene Luen, yeah, in, yeah, the next writer came in and was like, "Oh, I'm going to sort this out. I'm going to fix yeah. this." That was wasn't that Dan Jurgens? This is not yeah, convenient Jergens. to the story that I am trying to tell. Jurgens yeah. told a good story with it. He had like a separate Clark Kent and they managed to sort of 
Dan Jurgens is to Superman what Chris Claremont is to the X Men, and maybe there has been some gold, but I feel like you you got to make it to room. I really enjoyed his action comics run recently, his Rebirth run. It was. I fun. respect that. Yeah, I respect that. This is silly fun. Pretty good in the nineties. <laughs> um, this it like I really liked Massey's run where it was doing like him raising his son. Yeah, and it was doing something new of character. Ben Jerkins was telling like a more generic, a more generic story there, but he was telling it really well. Sure. Do you remember what happened after Jeff Johns left Green Lantern and uh, ben Robert Venditti took, took, took over? I did. What happened really immediately? What, immediately, what happened that. first was the something gods and emotions. The... Oh, of they all died. Did. Of course. The entities. He killed all of them. He killed all of the entities, the representations of the emotional spectrum by making them sacrifice themselves into the source wall. I still don't really understand why. And it was because like the emotional well was dry and that's why um, the that one character came out uh, who was like a gigant, giant from another universe where all the emotional well was drained dry because it was being they were being used as tools. I just don't like the... F if you want to tell your story, that's fine. But, I mean, dude, Jeff Johns just created those characters, those those creatures. And then he was just like, nah, fuck them. I'm going to have only Parallax exist now. And I just but don't I want that to continue yeah. to happen. But I will say, um, at least the Rage Entity is back alive now. Uh, When did that happen? Green Lanterns issue 6, 5, I think in Rebirth. I thought that they said that that wasn't the original entity. No, they've they've created a new entity at least. Interesting. Okay, I like it's, it's did a really far reach back. Yeah. Okay. And Parallax okay. is still alive, I assume. Yeah, he, he is. Well. Yeah. No, no, Parallax still exists, but um. Yeah, I guess the thing I'm trying to say is I agree with you. I think that there's a lot of frustration about when writers come in and then they just like do immediate yeah. retcons that are kind of messy. I don't mind if you do a retcon, but I just don't really want it to be messy. Yeah, Jeff Johns is the king of retcons, but he does it in like a nice, clean way. He does it in a way that's respectful to all of the other previous writers, and I feel he like does he it also with does surgical it... precision. Yes, absolutely. So like, we're still enjoying lots Venom of, and like, King. Yeah, King and yeah, Donny Kate stuff is great. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to rush you. <laughs> no, I was going to say lots of writers do retcons with bulldozer, but Jeff Johns comes in with a scalpel. Yeah, that's a really good way of uh, describing it. What's okay. next? Yeah, so that takes on to our next book, Stillwater number five. Oh, okay. By Chip Zdarsky and Ramon K. Perez. Ramon. Ramon. You make everything sound so sexual. Fan. I wasn't as big a fan of this issue as previous ones. That's interesting, because I'm the opposite. I think it's... Um, been picking up the last few issues. I wasn't too well, keen these, on issue one and two, but these first two pages on. just really threw me off because in the first yeah. two pages they use the same picture multiple times. Uh, yeah, I yeah, the art is a little lazy in this issue. Like the judge's face just stayed the same in like six different pages. Mm -hmm. But I think the storytelling is really good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we have the judge basically dealing with the... He's not a sheriff. Who's the guy with the green hat? Is he just a normal cop? I think he was sheriff at one point. They've kind of swapped off. Yeah. So sheriff's he's... now the red-headed lady. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she is basically taking the body of his friend from the first issue who got shot. And mm -hmm. she's disposing of him. She's like, I'm going to take him several states over, burn the um, car. I'll be back in a couple of days. That must be so scary to leave Stillwater. Like, you're no longer yeah. invincible. You're not going to grow back, you know, if you get shot or hurt or anything like that. And, you know, you're going to age. Yeah. Gonna be, every she's, second you're going to age at least a few days. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's that plotline being addressed. And then we go to the courtroom where, oh, I should say, at the dinner at the beginning or the party. They basically mm -hmm. said they're gonna they're gonna vote and force the judge to um allow them to leave. allow people to leave, yeah. Because they can't hide themselves with, you know, the no. way technology is and, progressing in the outside yeah. world. And they say it's not fair to the kids that um they happen to stay in kids' bodies, even though they've got like the mentality of like 
30 year olds yeah that's crazy so they go to the court and um they all basically vote and the judge is basically like no it's a he's like i've done nice way every- it. yeah he's like i have divine right because god has given me power and yeah and then he basically orders the police to start shooting on the citizens mm-hmm when after, you're not going to kill them, but you're going to incapacitate them. So it's, yeah, exactly. And it's just sort of it's very brutal because obviously you know they're not going to die, but he's willing it's to hurt just, a whole lot. Yeah. And I just find it very timely that this happened. This issue came out less than a week after the DC insurrection. Two weeks. Was it two weeks? Yeah, that was on the sixth. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, it just felt very appropriate for this time with the riots and everything that had been going on. But then at the end, as everyone's escaping, the courtroom blew up and we see some two shady characters on a rooftop watching it. Yeah, I was going to note that. I wonder what's going on. Yeah, so we don't know who's blown up yet. They all have to like reconstitute themselves like the Terminator. Yeah. Terminator 2. Yeah. <laughs> is that the T-1000? Yes, it is the liquid one. Mm-hmm. Have either of you ever ever read or I don't know how accurate the show was, but maybe watched Under the Dome by Stephen King? I never got around to that. I think I read a bit of a synopsis. Okay. But Just the judge reminds me of a lot. character in that where he's like, Oh, I've got divine rights. Yeah. Yeah. Cause but um yeah, in Under the Dome, spoiler alert. Not really. Um there's like this car salesman who's sort of like the richest guy in town he sort of throws his weight around a lot and mm-hmm. he basically fakes being christian he's very sort of like he uses his, his religion to sort of get people to do his bidding yeah that's so just seeing, used a lot yeah oh he was a real piece of shit like he was one of those characters you hate mm. but yeah just the judge reminded me a lot of him when he was like i've got divine right because god gave me this power when he made our town immortal yeah. basically and then uh, Daniel yells so loud, he yells in red. What page was this on? Uh, third to last page when he's yelling for the doc, he yells doc and then doc a bit louder, but it's in red. Uh... I cannot see it. Uh, top panel, third to last page. He's yelling, Doc. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Very interesting. But yeah, I'm really digging the story. Yeah, the art is a, is lazy in some places, but mm-hmm. I'm really digging the story. Yeah, I'm excited for what, you know, comes next. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm not exactly sure what some, like, uh, one of these guys, like Navy SEALs or something. Yeah, because at the end we have um, the police officer from the first issue who's given him a hard time. He goes out into the woods somewhere and there's some sort of militia, like some, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it seems like they've just arrived in town because he's like, I can't die and neither can you. Yeah, and then he says, simplify. Yeah. So maybe so, Marines? Yeah, these people he's served with before that have come to town because they're all older than him, visibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, these could be people he know that he's brought into town because he knows that they're going to have to take control, maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly what the plan is. Just keep shooting them till they, yeah. you know, subdue. Well, you can sort of patrol the border. It's just more, more people, more soldiers. Just corral them all up, take them off the border, and shoot yeah. them there. Yeah, I yeah, it's a really what fun you, story. I, what do you do with a town with nobody in it if you're going to get rid of everyone? Yeah, well, they don't want to get rid of everyone. They want them to stay there. They don't want anyone to escape. Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that issue. To be fair. Okay. Are you still going to be uh, continue reading it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. 
So now Batman Catwoman number two by Tom King and Clayman. I liked this a lot more than the first issue. Agreed. I was not a fan um, of the first issue. I'm still not. A, <clears throat> I'm still not 100 sold on this one, but it's I, this is definitely an improvement. I mean, so for me, I feel like this is um, this very clearly ties into so much of the storyline that Ooh. Tom King has written for his. Uh, I've just noticed on the opening page, it's got like the big bat cat spread of the house. If you mm -hmm. look in the windows, it's got the title of each issue on in them. Or yeah. Like so far, like the first window is chapter one, Silent Night, and then chapter two up on the house top. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't notice that. I just sort of skipped over, thinking it was the same design as for the first issue. Is ah, it a Christmas okay. issue? Cool. It is taking place sort of around that season. Okay. I mean. It's Tom King, so what he likes to do is it's a lot of prose kind of uh, scattered within the uh, storyline here and there. Maybe it doesn't necessarily have to equate to the actual story itself, but, I mean, he likes to quote Shakespeare or songs or what have you. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to say really quick, the redesign on these costumes, I'm really into. I really dig. They are nice, yeah, with the glow and blue eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very nice. And... The, the art is incredible. Clayman is great. Oh, he's fantastic. I And I think that he's definitely improved upon his uh, expression of emotions. Definitely. Um, there's been some criticism that I've seen before people uh, from people about his work that says that he's only capable of drawing a singular emotion. I see and that. I could see that criticism. I think that he's improving upon that. And you could see that with Joker. You can see that with Selena in this issue. Yeah. Um, I, I just say on page two or three that um, full page spread of Phantasm looks great. Oh my god, this Phantasm event, oh my, it's very interesting. I yeah. still feel a little strange about this scattering around for timelines, but I'm more accustomed to it now, so I think that now that I'm aware it did, of it... I'm still a little confused when, because I understand there's like the older version, then there's the sort of middle-aged version, which takes place after his Batman run, sort of they're middle-aged. Mm -hmm. But then I don't really know quite where the first timeline falls sure because i was I feel... expecting this to be sort of very early on like after the boat alley street wherever mm -hmm. it was from this batman run but it seems to be taking place sort of maybe just after his run i can't quite pin down when it's supposed to be this all feels uh like it's taking place after his run and i feel like the storyline with selena and the joker is really further he, down the road, he mentions, like dramatically. I can't remember which timeline it is, but he does mention at some point the events that happened in the church. Yeah, he oh, does. He mentions it's, the it's slitting the old, of the, it's the old version. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so here's what I'm looking at it as: the sequences where Selena is wearing her more recent costume with the the gloves that show more skin and her armpits showing. Um, I feel like that's following immediately after, or I'm sorry, maybe like just before the events ending in, uh, Tom King's run. And okay. then the new redesign is following immediately after issue 85. Um, and I think that that's where this kind of falls into together, falls to, to, to uh, into we, place. I don't think we see the armpit window costume in this. No, you do. She's, or she's got, is that the, she's got like the full Pfeiffer body. One. Yes. The five for one. Oh, you know what? You're right. Okay, that's my mistake. Okay, so then that's a lot further back. Uh, and then this new costume redesign is immediately following 85. And then an immediate jump into the future. Does that does that sound okay. right? Maybe, yeah. I don't think we're supposed okay. to have much thought into it, maybe. I can definitely see this being something that should be binged, I think. Yeah. In a you book, can say that with a lot I'm... of his work, but I think the slow burn... Yeah. Well, like, it builds mystery, builds suspense, because... With I'm enjoying his it, stuff. So. It'll, with his stuff, the books always take a twist in like issue six or seven. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering where it's going to go. But I there's one bit of this I liked where we get a um, we get an appearance of Porky's bar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. From his run, and we have Porky in there with his stutter. <sighs> I do really enjoy that. I love the yeah. little subtle details in this. Um, because that I'm came really from happy... his Elmer yeah. Fudd issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it also came from his uh, one of his annuals. Um, no, it was his... Um, it was in the Nightmares 
arc. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's my bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really happy that they're continuing with this Mask of the Phantasm, like, your Angel of Death awaits. I love that. I love that sequence in the subway. That's so good. That was I'm very interested like, to see where we have like yeah, you have like we can just see him getting closer and closer. Mm-hmm. It's great, and um, I also love that scene where you see Joker, like the older version, coming out of the kitchen with a gun, and mm-hmm. then like Selina's just behind him mm-hmm. with that like deranged smile on her face. Yeah, see, that's that was, what I'm that... saying as far as like the emotional expression. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, this it ends with her killing Joker. Uh, the same way that she did in the church, right? Yeah, she slashes his throat. Which is interesting. Did you notice that when she clawed, she didn't actually protrude any claws? Yes. That was weird. I don't know if that was an artist's choice or a writer's choice. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, more, uh, more Tom King? Yeah, it's really good, but I will just mention as well, in the sort of middle timeline we have joker come to them for help because he knows phantasm's coming for him and that's like the perfect design of joker he's got like the long tails at the back Mm. like yeah and with the gun guys i'm gonna pause this really quick i'm gonna have to cut this um my girlfriend's calling me so i'm just gonna take this really quick okie dokie What's the uh, schedule for the rest of these? Um, I will send it over to you. Okay. I should probably just start posting it in the main chat, to be honest. Yeah. Because I used to do it for Dave, where I'd sort of send him like an outline of what. Yeah, no, that was nice. There you go. All right. I try and like balance it so people don't go too long without talking. I'm not sure we're going to have time to get to uh, WandaVision. No, this is going on a little long, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe if you guys are free tomorrow evening or something, could do it then, half an hour. Sure, yeah. Just let me know. I mean, that sounds fine to me. Yeah, cool. Sorry about that. Um, She wanted to, like, let me know that she's playing it safe. The UK more contagious and lethal strain showed up in uh, one of our counties. Mm -hmm. It's not more lethal, it's just more infectious. They have announced potentially more lethal. Yeah. I miss everything. It sucks. Boris, I, uh, Boris Johnson announced it yesterday or the day before. I watched some of the uh, commercials they have for you guys right now, and I'm just like, Jesus Christ, they're really fucking hamming it in. Yeah. All right, shall we uh, get back to it? Okay. Did you have anything else to add to Batman Catwoman, or should we just cut right to... Now nah, we can just move on. Okay. Um, okay, I'll start now. Uh, Rorschach number four by Tom King and Jorge Fornes. Yeah, I I uh I was kind of surprised by this uh, issue. Yeah, I really liked it. It. I did too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not exactly what I expected for a Rorschach book, but it's uh no. This is progressing in a way that's um catching me off guard in a way that I like. Yeah, so this gave us a little backstory of 
or yeah. sort of every issue. Let me think. No, issue two was about the artist, but three and four yeah. have both been her backstory, Laura. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a detective, you know, collect all the facts, all, you know, well, all the information he can get. He's investigating the different people. Right. I'm thinking maybe next issue we might see something about the campaign or something. I maybe. hope so. I hope so. Um, the little subtle details in the background, like Redford winning over uh, the uh, opponent who was a conservative, mm -hmm. and yeah, mentioning that it's going to be the uh, longest. Yeah, I didn't know he was he the uh, a liberal president. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, they they discussed that in the first issue, and they discussed. Um, yeah, it still it still keeps throwing me off. It feels like this is maybe partially a criticism about some of the conspiracy theory aspects of some of the right in some regard. Yeah. Yeah. I might be reaching. I might be reaching, but yeah. I'm really... Uh, the the hmm. timeline keeps throwing me off because they say he's, you know, won a fourth term as president, but in, like, other things, he's president, like, the... 90s i think mm -hmm. in the uh watchman tv show he becomes president in like 95 or something like that um yeah something like that because vietnam but, is still a state and then they ended up being uh the ones to vote for him yeah but this is set in like present day this is like 2020 right here well you gotta remember that this is is this is this is a timeline where they don't have term limits and they don't have uh yeah i'm not too uh familiar with that part uh so yeah, the term limits... say tom taylor uh, not tom taylor tom king has said that the tv show is at least canon to this as well That's yeah it is yeah um the term limits weren't really implemented until after nixon because uh, he i think is the longest sitting president for re-election that uh, in american history um and they actually discussed that in this issue. And I'm assuming that has to do with the fact that the Watchmen universe takes place the way the in the timeline that it does, because uh, with the the constant re-election of Nixon and the uh, threat of nuclear war, that was kind of where that fell. I don't know. I thought. I, did you notice also that this took place with a circus, which I feel like is like a throwback yeah. to some of Dude, the earlier. I saw the like, cover. comics. I saw the cover and I thought we'd be exploring a different, uh, I can't think of the, the masked, uh, hooded justice. Maybe I thought we'd be exploring like a different version of hooded justice. I think it was, that would have been interesting. Um, I feel like what they did in the show for hooded justice was like, mwah, yeah, top tier yeah. stuff. I always wanted to know where they might've gone with that in the, uh, before Watchmen series. Mm. Cause one of the, uh, theories that they had explored was you know a strong man from the from the circus oh yeah they did didn't they okay something like that sure 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 i uh i was a little confused about the choice to make the character that's been introduced uh so obsessed with coloring but i feel like that's a metaphor for filling in the lines for the detective yeah that's interesting yeah, that's I just my theory. It was just like this guy might, you know, have some sort of, you know, I don't know, mental like a mental or something. Not like a, yeah, like a thought, mental handicap. Yeah, like he I might be kind of, handicap. you know, kind of a childlike. But he, the way he talks, he doesn't seem childlike. Sure. No, but yeah, the general plot of the story is Laura sort of tells this strongman that um, Manhattan didn't kill the Watchmen, but he dispersed their energy. And they were reincarnated. Yeah. Their energy went into others. And yeah. that he was Rorschach. I wonder if that's going to become more canon. Uh, it, no, because most of them are still alive. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, Owlman and like Laurie are still alive. I'm just thinking about, Adrian. like, yeah. it might not be true for the others, but there might be, like, that little kernel of truth. Like, that's what happened with Rorschach. Maybe. Like, not with anybody else, but maybe him. Yeah, I liked how we got to see... Jorge Fornes draw for Minutemen, the Watchmen. Yeah. Um, I because also if they, would... if they continue with like that little kernel of thought, maybe the detective has Warshak yeah. inside of him. Maybe, yeah. 
and maybe that it's would sort be... of represent how Rorschach is an idea that spreads. Yeah, we're he's not all one Rorschach. Man. Rorschach's inside all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, my I kind part... of. Mm -hmm. Go on. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, maybe I was the just coloring say... thing is happening. Like he's still talking, but he got shot in the head. It looks like a couple of times. So uh, maybe that gave him saying. like the kind of childlike, you know, I, I, I feel like this is kind of feeding into my original theory, which was that uh, this detective is uh, in place of the therapist in the Rorschach issue of the original Watchmen series where he gets influenced by the behaviors. Yeah. And that I think that that what you had just said about that would that would make sense to me. I'm, I'm really enjoying it still. I feel like this was a slower issue than the other ones, but I'm still enjoying it. Yeah, mm -hmm. my favorite part of this issue though was we got to see um, Rorschach drop Captain Carnage down the elevator shaft that was mentioned in <laughs> Watchmen number one. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. That was good. I'm not familiar with that. I was wondering what was going on with this guy. Yeah, in uh, Watchmen number one, at the end of the issue, we have uh, Dan and Laurie talking, and they're mm -hmm. like, "Hey, do you remember when uh, Rorschach dropped that guy down the elevator shaft? It was the guy okay. who um, kept getting beaten up because he enjoyed it. Like he gets like off on it." Oh, like yeah. which is such a I, subtle it seemed like what was going so on. Good. I'm like, I, I was like, I think this guy is full of shit, but yeah. I found it weird. Like, this wasn't the strong man that dropped him down the elevator shaft, was it? Mm -mm, no, it wasn't. Like, maybe. I don't know because we definitely no, have because... him doing some of the. Christ. Well, no, but look at the shape of him. He's dramatically. Yeah, that's what I was thinking not... about. Like, that's what kept throwing me off. Okay, like, yeah. he doesn't look like he has the same body shape as the strong man. But... No, and they yeah. clarify yeah, that was... later, like with some of the uh, the the drawings of him. I mean, he's still very much like apparent when he when he is uh, yeah. taking over that role as Rorschach. Mm. Yeah, this is really interesting. This is Tom King yeah. firing on all cylinders. Uh, yeah, I would say that I'm still more invested in Strange Adventures right now, but I'm still I'm still really so, enjoying. Yeah, but this is telling a different story. It's much more like each issue is kind of it's kind of an anthology book because each issue is telling a different story. Sure. Yeah. Even though there is no Rockin story. Mm -hmm. That being the detective kind of trying to hunt down and understand what's happening, yeah. I'm kind of more curious about what's going on in the mind of the detective now, and I also want to know more about the detective. So I, I'm looking forward to whenever that happens, if that happens. I'm just hoping he doesn't become influenced by Warshak and then put on the mask at the end because I feel it's a little predictable for Tom King. Yeah. Well, for us maybe, but I'm for a normie. I don't think so. For a normie, I mean, it, it shows the guys like the third to last panel is just him, and it says, you know, has that speech bubble. Rorschach is waiting right there next to his face. Mm. I feel like that's the right choice to do it, though. I feel like if that does go down that path, I feel like that's not a bad choice. I think it's, it's just not a matter bad of how choice. You get there. I just feel like I... Tom King always sort of subverts expectations. Like, yeah, it wouldn't be a bad choice if they did it before the final issue. If like the final issue was just him like putting on the mask. Yeah. Mm. yeah. With Tom King's or a conspiracy you always of think it's going one way and then like issue six or seven it'll kind of twist it and go in a different direction. So I'm kind I of hope so. I'm just kind of hoping We're it doesn't do the One third thing. of the way through. This was issue four of twelve. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And next is Future State. So we have Next Batman by John Ridley and Laura Braga. I'm yeah. really enjoying this still. Yeah, I only read the first story in this. I didn't read the the second one is really good, surprisingly good. Is that the Batgirls one or the Say Sirens? Yeah. Okay. Uh, really it, it is. It's it's really good. I really enjoyed it. I was I was surprised by what they did with uh, spoiler and uh, Cass, uh, okay. Cassandra Cain. Um, yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was really surprised. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say surprise. It's just that I guess I didn't anticipate that story when they were introducing Cassandra being walked down the. Um, hallway of the prison i was expecting harley quinn for some reason but then she showed and i was like oh and that was an yeah. actual like surprise for me i really enjoyed it yeah the next batman was fun i still think it's a little it's a little i don't say generic it's telling a simple batman story well but i was kind of expecting it to break new ground because of um the history of the dc universe yeah that's fair i even, think that this is a little still... stiff right now but yeah, even though it's still a good story, I can't help but feel disappointed by it. No, I mean, I 
I don't think your criticism is necessarily invalid. I'm still enjoying it. I'm obviously going to pick up yeah. the next following ones, and I'm definitely curious about what John Lee Ridley is going to write next. But yeah, I, um, I do like his Batman. He's like he is one who sort of talks to the people. He talks to the criminals. Because mm -hmm. in the first issue, we had him like rescue the um, the two kids who had joined the Bane gang. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm turning you up to social services, but like, right. Learn from this mistake and be better. I, and in this one, we have the two guys who, um, they got revenge for the person killing their daughter. Yes. And he did but kind of stop and talk that's, to them. that's actually the thing that I wanted to bring up was that this is the first time that I've seen in a superhero comic book, something that challenging because I really don't usually see something that dark in reality brought into the comics, which I think was yeah. brave. To be very, you know, straightforward. Um, I don't have kids, but I mean, I can only imagine the horror of having something like that happen to me, to someone that I cared about, someone that was my child. But I just, I thought it was an interesting choice because typically you don't see that in comics, like I said. But I, I, I think for that reason alone, that's what made the story good. Yeah, it is good and it is addressing some issues. And yeah, mm -hmm. I'm very disappointed this issue wasn't done by Nick Darrington. Uh, you know, me too, but I still enjoyed it. Baraga, I'm not that familiar with. No, it was still... Oh, wait, no, she was... No, she was the artist. Yeah. It was still solid art. There's no complaints there, but Nick Darrington's just that next level. <laughs> I think that Nick Darrington does a very brilliant Gotham. I think that's the thing that yeah. really strengthened him. With the um, colors so as I well. Agree with you. Yeah. They... Yeah, it was really good. Um, up next is Catwoman by Ram V and Otto Schmidt, which you and I both read and I really enjoyed. This was incredible. This was great. Also, what was that thing? This. I had um, to, like, look at how to, like, make the hand shape that they made. Yeah, it's like... Did you notice that? Oh, you I can't think see it's me. the shape yeah. of an animal. It's... Is it a cat? Ah! Uh... No, I don't think so, because cats don't have ears that long, but I think that it's supposed they... to emulate. <laughs> yeah, well, they've got their fingers. They just will have to try their best, I think. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I just thought it was a really interesting t uh, choice to do that. This was yeah. fun. I enjoyed this. This was a really good issue. This is um, a um a comic book, but then, and, and at all terms. You know, it's a little over the top, but it's done in a way that's fun and yeah, doesn't I'm... make doesn't take you out of it. Yeah, definitely. The art is incredible. Otto Schmidt. I'm oh, yeah. Fan of his. yeah. There's and... definitely one sequence where it's an up close of uh, Catwoman that I was like, that's a little loose, but I'm okay with the rest of the, the one panel doesn't ruin the whole book for me. Yeah. Um, I like Otto Schmidt. It's a very unique style. Yeah. Uh, he this is actually making me want to pick up. In... Yes. Yeah. His Green Arrow stuff was really, really good. And he did Hawkeye as well. That I really this want to is actually to. making, this is making me want to pick up uh, more of Ram V's uh, Catwoman. Actually, he's only done four issues so far, so perfect time. I know, to get but it. It, I had I had fallen off after issue twenty five because I was just like, eh. But I'm thinking about hopping back on. This was a lot better than his main run. Okay, it's still enjoyable. Like his main run's still enjoyable, but this was just sort of the next level. Are you familiar with the character Onomatopoeia? I know of him, but I've never read him. He just makes sounds. Him. He literally just makes sounds. He puts a mask on that's got a bullet point, and every time he does a sequence, he's making automatopias with his literal voice. So he scoops up some guy's blood and then draws a circle and he goes scrabble. And then he like opens through the door and he goes whip pip kapow. And like he says the words instead of like doing the action sequences. <laughs> it's really meta and really funny, but I've just never heard of that character before. It's very new to me. Yeah, he was huh. a Kevin Smith creation. No, he was not. Yeah. I love uh, it. <laughs> it. Sounds like that character from uh, Commanders in Crisis. The lady that creates a word to affect reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, the story is basically Selena hijacking, not hijacking, but breaking into a train that's on the move. Um, and then? Yeah, well, she's staging a rescue mission for, for... a certain someone. A little some somebody. Yeah. Um, yeah, shuffle, we also shuffle. have Talia show up. She's broke. That like, was she's interesting. Gone undercover. Yeah. She's undercover that... on there to rescue Bruce, who is still alive. I... The city thinks he's I... dead. 
Yeah, everybody thinks he's dead. This yeah. whole thing with the magistrate is becoming more clear as I read more future state stuff. But this was uh, this was especially good for having it on the train. Yeah. It kind I of like felt how like... it's telling a story out of order because we're getting Dark Detective, which is early on. Yes. We're getting this sort of in the middle. We're getting next Batman, which is a few years later. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm really surprised that I'm enjoying Future State the way that I am. Um, yeah. The uh, the next one is actually the one that I'm most excited to talk about and is my pick of the week, which is uh, Superman Worlds at War by Philip Kennedy Johnson and Mikhail Yanin. Um, Hannon. Mikhail Hannon? Yeah, in Spanish for J okay. is pronounced as an H. Oh, I thought he was Russian. Okay. Oh, he might be Russian. I've, uh, I have no idea. Tom King said Hannon in an interview, so I've been... Yes, okay. Well, I mean, he would know, right? He talks to the dude. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so the many lives of Clark Kent is the name of the issue. Mm. This is this was such a good read for me. I was so stimulated the whole time. The plot point being this young woman uh, from Gotham going to Smallville and visiting uh, the newly founded like cult follow following uh, of Superman now that he's gone and no one knows where he is. And yeah. what did she say? Um, is like worshiping their <laughs> his high school uh, science texts. As, like, gospel, that was scripture, funny. yeah. That's, That's so, so funny to me. Uh, in, there was one bit that made me laugh. It's um, learn to play the Yulun, a real Kryptonian instrument. And I don't know what story it's from, but I have heard of a Yulun before, whether it was in yeah. maybe All Star Superman or something. I feel like there's a lot of references in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's I, me, I Superman's girlfriend, and it looks like Lana Lane sat at a table. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, oh, did Lana Lane get fat? Uh, is she fat or is it just the way her arms are positioned? Uh, <laughs> I was know. hoping they would maybe like sneak in the cafe from Smallville along the buildings right there. Ah, oh, that would have been really that good. That would be good. They have, yeah, no, it's not on there. I gotta say, this is the best of Mikhail Hennon's art I've ever seen. This is his, this is the best, absolutely. Uh, Jordi Bellard doing co uh, colors, of course. Uh, god, she's a queen. Yeah, he worked um, with um, June Chung early on in Rebirth, and it sort of didn't do justice to his artwork as much. Mm -hmm. But his work with Bel Air is being a lot stronger. It's fantastic. And this is the first time that I've looked at Hannon's art and been like, this is making me shiver. It's so good. I mean, I've recognized that he's talented, of course. It's just, yeah. I think that there's been times where either it's his art or someone as a colorist is making it look too 3D, and I don't want yeah. that. That was the colorist in early rebirth stuff that really made sure. it look like three models. I don't. I just it was not my thing. I don't like it. It's very much like a Brandon Peterson thing. I don't like Brandon Peterson's art style yeah. at all. So we get yeah. to a collection um, of people out in. I don't know one of the cornfields, maybe. Yeah, I assume that Smallville looks like very gets... dusty, like it's almost in a desert. Well. I think that Smallville was based around towns affected during the Dust Bowl, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, true. I, is it true? I, I, okay, cool. I believe it. I don't know if it's true, but they that is it where the Dust believable. Bowl was. Okay. Um, I didn't really expect... I didn't know I wanted a sequence of people like telling their own interpretations of Superman, either being yeah. characters from Invincible or... Yeah! Yeah, that, you know the other day when I messaged and said, has anyone read Superman yet? Yeah. That was because I looked at that page and I was like, that's invincible. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it that was horrible cool. zombies <laughs> on the page before that. Oh my God, that was so good. So anyway, I sent you guys uh, that picture of uh, Superman Blood of My Ancestors. It was just a trade from, I don't know, 2008 or 2009. And that picture of Superman in chains kind of reminded me of the uh, cover from that book. But you also have that monster with all the different tentacles and whatnot that kind of looks yeah. like the monster from the cover there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it. That tentacle the... monster one, that was one of my favorite like side stories just because of the way that that guy talked about how like it tested his faith and he thinks about it all the time afterwards. This was such a the... good issue. The tentacle monster in this issue reminds me of the one from the Futurama movie, Beast of a Billion Bucks. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I can see, see that. the, the yeah. one eye and I kind of think of Starro. That's what yeah, I was I thinking. Well. Was it this yeah. issue we got a star appearance? No. No, I think it was Justice no. League. Was it Justice yeah. League where it was him and Darkseid? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like when up... there was one bit where a guy was saying, like, I hope Superman sort of found peace and he's just in space with a farm. And we had yeah. that, like, 
the just like I like that. panel of Superman just sort of sowing seeds, and it was just just like Thanos. That's funny. I uh, <laughs> they're very that similar guy, characters. That oh yeah, totally. That guy mansplaining to the uh, introduced character. T- am I wrong? He's totally. He's no, like, um, oh actually, my God. he's that one guy that you just hate. <laughs> that one kid from like the Polar Express. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Like, God damn. Shut up. Just uh, shut up. <laughs> uh, uh, the walking away and then like mentioning that he was Clark Kent and yeah, that was like, the person who saved him. Tell us how him. Superman oh. saved you. Superman didn't. Clark Kent did. That was, that really, was great. Really good. That was really good. Shivers okay. Right there. You are going to hate me for this, but I discovered new parts about my sexuality in this comic. And I didn't realize how much I had a it's thing a for Superman with chains. it is it is shirtless daddy <laughs> Superman with a white beard, and I was just sitting there no, like, well, wait, I... till, wait till we get to Wonder Woman. I... <laughs> I didn't realize I needed that in my life until I saw that, and I'm like, that's that's a new thing for me to discover should, uh, about myself. You should check out the uh, blood of my ancestors. <laughs> well, maybe I will. Maybe yeah, a little this just is because of that. my biggest complaint of the issue is hmm. this final this final sort of tease of Superman with Mongol in War World and he's yeah. like a slave. This looks lit. I want more I like I want a full story of this. That's like, what the next that, part is gonna be. Isn't that the Hulk War World? But that's still only like a twenty page issue of this. Yeah. Like this, it seems this more book was thick. Thick. Yeah. I didn't yeah, read the full I didn't man. read the other two stories, so take it away and tell me what they're about. Yeah. Um so I, the second one else, is Mr. Miracle. Does Go anybody ahead. else get Mo- Mongol and dark side mixed up sometimes they look, some, yeah. they look the, sim- the same a lot of the time so a something that i really want to point out really quick the mongol uh here is has declared that he is still just a descendant of one of the previous mongols mm-hmm. and uh much in the same they, they kind of dealt of with this in, Mongol. yes because of the Su- uh, superman storyline with bendis um they kind of clarify that a little bit um, with War World, but this is the first time I think I've seen War World look like a gladiator uh, temple, which I'm it, for. I'm interested. Yeah, I want, like this is cool. I'd love to see for me. Less. The that pros last, in this was the thing that stood out to me. That last page looked like Superman looked like he was written by uh, John Romita Jr. Drawn by John Romita Jr. Kind of has that blocky face. I can't I mean, see. I it, can yeah. see that. Yeah, it's a lot cleaner though. Yeah. Yeah. Was not I, yeah, I do see the blockiness, yeah. I really liked that Superman asked that character his name and then said, hey, we're going to make it through this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's such a Superman moment. He hasn't lost hope. Mm-hmm. This, I, I knew that Philip Kennedy Johnson was a good writer. This just solidifies that for me more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very excited for his Superman at Action Comics run now. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, this section was pretty good. I just don't think it was as good as what I've come to expect from like The Last God. Mm. Although, if you're, you know, having to work within the, you know, Superman, you, you mean the whole story of the last couple of pages, just the whole, you know, twenty pages here. I, I, I mean, he's Johnson's really good in, you know, writing the last god, but maybe having to work within like Superman, you're a little limited. Yeah, like different editorial team, but I still uh, think it was really good what I read. It, yeah, I can it's good. It's see just, that. I think something to consider, though, is the fact that when you are taking jobs like this, I mean, what you are doing is you're taking these characters that have yeah, existed yeah, for so long. I understand that and... you're restricted in some ways. Well, what I was going to say was that, I mean, his storyline with The Last God is in some ways uh, inspired by a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, as you can kind of see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that I th- I feel like Kennedy Johnson strikes me as the kind of person who would look at his confines and then look at them as strengths. Mm-hmm. I think is my only argument. I'm not disagreeing with you. I guess I'm just saying that that's what I'm seeing so far. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. definitely made me feel some things. Not not the same things that made that you felt. But... <laughs> I'm gonna feel them again later. <laughs> All right, Mr. Miracle. <laughs> no, there's just one more thing I want to mention. Actually, no, never mind. I, it was a question, but I still answered it myself. Carry on. Oh, okay, cool. Mr. Miracle, go ahead. Mm, this is a different miracle, Mr. Miracle than I'm used to. Yeah, it this is, is Shiloh it's... Norman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, this storyline was a little weird. I actually paced through it a little bit 
pretty fast. And by the end of it, I was like, wait, what did I just read? So then I re went back and read a little bit of it. But um, most I'm more confused about why this is in the Superman book than anything. Because I understand that it deals within that universe, but... Uh, or happenings, but I, I guess I just... Um, yeah. I'm also confused by the Midnighter story. Why introduce Midnighter? Oh, you know? are you uh, familiar with the Authority? Yeah. Uh, Sean, is something going on? Uh, I am. Is it my audio that's glitching? Oh, Thai audio. Okay. Yeah. No, I hear them. The art in this one, like, was good at some points, and other times it seems like really simple. Like someone was just doing a web comic or something. Mm -hmm. Like when in... Midnighter and Mr. Miracle cross paths, like Mr. Miracle just looks like a rough sketch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. It. I'm skimming through it now. I see what you mean. The art is very. Like yeah, there's good very sections basic. in here, but sometimes mm -hmm. it seems really simple. So, Mr. Miracle was all right, uh, but I thought the uh, Midnighter section was really good. The Midnighter one. I was really surprised by the art at the beginning, and then it kind of went back to being normal, and then it went back to being weird again. Yeah. You gotta um, have weird art when you're doing The Authority. I'm not gonna disagree with that. I guess I'm just saying that, again, my question is, why is this inside of the Superman book right now? It's I guess I'm just, just confused. connected to War World. He's in War World as well. It was just an interesting choice. Do we need to I mean, the reason say anything I... about the artist or writers for um... this? The art was Becky Clune and Michael Conrad, and the artist was Gleb Melenkov, I believe. Yeah, Jordy Blair is the colorist. Yeah, Melenkov is the artist doing the new Robin series as well. Okay. All right. Are you guys um, familiar with the Authority? You already asked I, this. I, yes. I know of it, but I'm, I've never read it. Okay. Just did. My only exposure to Midnighter comes from Grayson. Mm -hmm. he was a support character in that. Yeah, and then you have Grifter that's been appearing a lot. Yeah. yeah. A lot of that uh, Wildstorm universe is kind of making more appearances now. Yeah. Some of this kind of reminds me of Gen 13 stuff. The, okay. Uh, the weird monster robot sentinels that they had kind of seem like the similar art. Mm. Um, before we move on to Immortal Wonder Woman, I wanted to Ooh. ask, did anybody read Nightwing? I, well, I wanted to. I still had some stuff yeah, to I, say about the yeah, I want midnight. To talk oh, good. Help. So, uh, do you know that character that appeared at the end of the issue? Um, do I know Apollo. it personally? Are you familiar with who that Apollo. is? Their relationship with Midnighter? Yeah. Yeah. Seems yes. kind of odd. They are. So a, that, are that's a, a different version. Yeah, that's a different version of Apollo than I've seen. But Apollo and Midnighter are like the first two openly gay uh, superheroes. And at one point in some continuity, they were married to each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know who Trojan is. Maybe that's just who he was trying to, you know, kind of interpolate who the uh, person on the other end of the line was saying. I, uh, I don't know that character at all either. So. Hmm. Seems like a very odd face off. How was the Black Racer story? It's all right. It seems to set stuff up. Because so, the writer this is, a... is the one taking over for Flash in March, and I hope it's good. Jeremy yeah. Adams as the yeah. writer. Cyan Oom. High Fi as the colors. Yeah. Uh, I tried looking at Black Racer, but this is a version I couldn't find. Yeah, this is not the Black Racer I'm familiar with at all. So Black Racer is supposed to be some version of death. Yeah, he's the new god of death. God of mm -hmm. death. Yeah, he's a new god. So maybe she is too. It seems like she just got her powers at some point and she's getting used to them. Yeah. I didn't read the storyline. It seems like a revenge story. They were she was an actually, you know, racer in some sort of mech and then her suit got tampered with and she blew up and died oh black mm. racer does show up and speak to her at one point in this issue it looks like or in what in this issue we see black the actual black racer um where you got the two-page spread of her running along with in the race or whatever yeah go to the next page 
the middle panel black racer is in the reflection. Oh, yeah, I was wondering who that was. Okay. Yeah, that's the classic Jack Kirby design. Yeah, mm. okay. Okay, Nightwing. By I loved this. Who did this? Um, Andrew art Constant by Nicholas and Scott. Art by Nicholas Scott. Yeah. Yep, and I loved this. I was surprised at how much I loved this. This was great. Yeah, this is how you take Nightwing out from his shadow. From See, I don't even really... I didn't think about Batman really until Nightwing was like thinking about Batman and exactly. then interacting and with the next Batman. You, yeah, exactly. And you shouldn't like this did it seamlessly where they didn't need to take him away from Batman. He just already was away and you didn't even think about the previous character until they mentioned it. Mm -hmm. I think that the only criticism about this art that I have is that Nicholas Scott's choices for chins is strange sometimes, but yeah her uh, faces either look really good or a little off but honestly i'm f i'm okay with it because i know that she's probably just doing some maybe oh, yeah. some experimentation with the draw structure but that's okay because i know that she's gonna you know fix that uh yeah. in the long haul i still i think I like it didn't take away from in, the art i like her stuff in black magic oh, i love black magic i'm and really she enjoying did that wonder woman with uh rucka again yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i um I really, really like the design of this Nightwing outfit. It's really, it's, really good. Yeah, I really like it. I yeah, it's great. Like, it's very tactical. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I really like the opening sequence where he rescues this couple, and then he's like, "That oh. was interesting." Yeah, he's like, "Your posture's wrong. You're not yep. thankful. You're ready to pounce." Yep. And he like takes him down because they're like it was set up to try and capture him. I felt like there was a lot of this issue that reminded me of daredevil in a lot of ways I like the throwing it, yeah. of the batons yeah. you know what i mean i see it yeah and in that regard i don't i don't want nightwing to become the daredevil of dc comics you know i want him to be his own kind thing, of but... he kind of is to an extent because he's got the same weapons and he is an acrobat yeah yeah uh and i can uh i can see that i guess i'm just saying that that's something that they should try to teeter away from because adding, the, making sure these characters are unique is really important in my opinion. Yeah. You know? I, I don't yeah, want Batman to be compared to Batman every single time. I want... Yeah. So. We got our first sort of tease at Peacekeeper 1 in this issue. Mm -hmm. Who is not who I ex I expected to be a character we're familiar with, but it doesn't look like it is. Nope. Brand new character entirely. Doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Which I kind of like because... At least they sort yeah. of ripped that band-aid off early on. Um, he's what did you? He's going to be introduced in the ongoing Batman and Detective Comics yeah, run, of course. So, of course, yeah. So hopefully, like there, it can be sort of set up. But, what um, was um? What, what did you notice? How he broke Commissioner Montoya. Montoya's yes. uh, placard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was interesting. Yeah. So there's some because uh, she's got some past with him or something maybe. Well, it, she's not the commissioner right now in the main universe, no. right? She's it's Bullock. she was yeah, that's what I thought. So that this is also making me ask that same question again. How far into the future is this? This is just still I think it's about five years. Five years is enough time. I think that that would make sense. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, we have Dick is hiding out in Arkham. That's his base of operations, which was fantastic. Yeah, and it's nice to see Babs is still active because I saw people thinking she had been captured because she didn't have her own book, she wasn't solicited. That, the, the costume design for her, I didn't know that was her until he said Babs. Oh, I could tell immediately. I, I didn't know that at all. I was like, oh, is that Batwoman? I don't understand what the hell... No, I'm, I'm not weird. a fan of the design. It's a little weird, but, I mean... Like, let's be honest, that's not a mask. There's no way that hides my identity. <laughs> just like right there on the eyebrows yeah I, like... i'll send a picture to the chat so josh can see i mean is nightwing's not... mask a mask more so than that is it really it's a fucking domino mask in the jock strap yeah but this is like the i'm gonna send it it's cover so little send it, it has been send sent. it lol yeah that doesn't hide shit <laughs> <laughs> Is he wearing a mask? Not in that. He does oh, wear a mask. Not, yeah. oh. not in that panel, but he's got the uh, domino mask and he's wearing a jock strap that it like protects his chin, I think. 
that massive chin, that chinny oh, chin so chin. So we're talking about who is that? Barbara Gordon. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I know. That's what I'm saying. That looks like yeah, this is Nothing. a picture of him wearing a mask. It covers more than that little something. bit of. Okay, sure. <laughs> it covers 25% of his head, sure. <laughs> but yeah, the next one shows like, up to... Sean Murphy vibes. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Indeed, it is tactical. Yeah, we have a flashback to him with Bruce, and he's like, <laughs> I let you down, which I thought was a powerful moment. I agree. Um, and um, he, he's in the shower, and he hears, like, as and he's like, someone's here, and he goes out, and it's the new Batman. And they have a conversation, and he's like, "Yeah, I need your help." Yep. The resistance being built. Yeah. yeah. I um, this actually makes me want to read it more, and I I can't tell if it's the writer or if it's the art that's making me love it the most. But I think the combination I think right it's now both. is really strong. Yeah. But then the magistrate finds him. They're storming Arkham. So this is my fan theory. Um, we were talking about mental health and. Uh, instability at some point uh on the podcast and i had a thought with uh this issue who funds arkham asylum yeah the city see this is the problem though the city would not fund this because funding for government is from government tyler. institutions to mental tyler hmm. tyler it's a comic book yes i know I... that <laughs> just hear me out just hear me out I think that Batman's been funding Arkham City for a long time. Probably. I think that Arkham that's City. why he ends. Yeah, it's Arkham basically City. a city. Come on. Okay. Okay, Arkham Asylum, whatever. There you go. Um, <laughs> I think that he's been funding Arkham Asylum for years. Probably. And I think that that's the reason why he brings them there. Or at least like charitable donations. In the. That's the only thing zeros. I can think about. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's probably true. That's just my theory. I think that that, that would make the most sense considering uh, the state of things. Especially because it's not like he wants to continue bringing the Black Gate and everything. I mean, when's yeah, the last time somebody in, brought up... In this world as well, it is, you've got metahumans, so maybe they are... Mm -hmm. Like, the policies could be different with funding. I mean, I get it. Like it's a fictional thing. universe. I understand yeah. that. I'm just saying that if that were the case, that would make sense. So, uh, I think we're on the last one, and then we'll be done. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have any single, you know, anything that you were just reading yourself. Because I have, like, Maestro, War, and Pax, I could say for, like, you know, 10 or 30 seconds. Just cover yeah, we've got stuff. Immortal Wonder Woman to cover, and then just a couple of shout-outs, I think. A little smattering of stuff. Yeah, okay. Immortal Wonder Woman by Becky Clune and Michael Conrad and Jen Bartel. I'm just going to get this out of the way as quick as possible. Go um, for it. The art is incredible. It glows. Yeah, I mentioned this on the previous podcast, like not last episode, but like the previous podcast we did. Um, she did a image book with Sam Humphreys, and that was mm -hmm. gorgeous as well. What was the title? Uh, Blackbird, I think, or Bluebird, Blackbird. Blackbird flying. Maybe. So this is yeah. like way in the future. Are yeah, this is like weird that it starts off with years. impossibly long ago in the distant future. Oh. Impossibly long ago in the distant future. What I... <laughs> and, uh, Batman is like a force ghost. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Keep going. Oh my god. What were we talking Well, we're talking about Wonder Woman. I know that. I just had a, night, a thought from like <laughs> a week ago, last week's comics. Okay. I don't know. I'll get back to you on that. Hmm. Okay. I really like that panel of her when she puts the um, belt on and it sort of zooms out of her on the building. That is a gorgeous piece of art. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, there is all that growth everywhere. Yeah. Similar to like Origins that we've been reading where the city sort of mm -hmm. become overrun with wildlife yeah. not wildlife but plant life flora um did you guys notice that the costumes she's looking at in the tube are the dark knight returns yeah yes i did what is up with that i don't know well it's in the future isn't it 
<laughs> I uh I think this is one of my favorite drawings of Darkseid. Interesting because yeah. I felt the art was weakest when it was doing the new god stuff. Yeah. I didn't Dark mind Side it. just doesn't give a fuck. The world's yeah, ending. I'm... Whatever. This is boring. This is boring. I'm tired. <laughs> this isn't yeah. silly fun. So Big Bart is here while Mr. Yeah. Miracle is on War World. Oh well it's a different Mr. Miracle, so whatever. Yeah. And mm. it's taking place centuries apart, I assume. Yeah. And then Darkseid just kind of floats out to, nah, I'm good. He's it's just, like, oh, he, I'm, I'm a head out. <laughs> arms I'm a head crossed, out. just, you could just see like somebody with like a cutout just like pulling him yeah. up into the air. Left. Mm. And then Swamp Thing is on Themyscira. Yeah, he's now a tree. There's all sorts of growth around the world, but he's dying. Yeah, I loved his, like, the artwork for the tree is gorgeous. It is very interesting to see. He's almost like a willow, maybe? Yeah, I can no. see that. Not so much a willow, but a big tree. No, I know what you mean, though. This was an interesting issue to read. I don't know, I guess I didn't expect this, but I guess I also didn't know what to expect going into this. I don't know. Yeah. What did you think about um, how that first story ends and then it led into uh, Yeah, we had Superman one. show up, which was interesting. I didn't like it. No, uh, I agree. I, I that was weird to me. Going. We don't really see what Swamp Thing passes off to Diana. Do we? No. It's the Superman thing. I feel like Superman kind of This feels like chunky. a series that needed more than two issues. Yeah, he is, he is. He is a little chunky. I think it's just for design. Chunker. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't. Know. But yeah. I don't yeah, know. This this needed more room to breathe. I feel. Are you yeah, gonna pick well, up the next it's one? Not as big as the uh, Superman thing. No, paid. but it's still <laughs> only only paid six dollars for this. Well, I mean, the Batman one was also thick. I mean, this is eight dollars. Look at this. Look at yeah. the size of that one. Mm -hmm. Thick. Are you gonna pick up the next one? Yeah, probably. Like it's, it's, mean, two, it's two issues, so I'm going to pick yeah. up a second. Yeah. It's yeah, not hard okay. to justify. Like, ah, just another no. one. Just another one. What's Shh. one more? Another one. It is worth it to look at the arts. I do really love Becky Cloonan. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you know, I'll pick up the next one. Yeah. All right. Uh, I didn't read the Nubia story. Was it good? It was okay. Uh, it's, um, it's all right. It's slow at the beginning, in my opinion. I think it picks up with the conversation uh, in the uh, nightclub okay. in the end there yeah. um this kind of ties into i'll be honest with you i don't really know anything about nubia uh except that it makes racists mad um yeah. i thought she, she was exists. from like the aquaman storyline i'm not familiar with her nubia uh, has been around for a little uh, a, a while um she is a secondary wonder woman character that interestingly never really took up the mantle except for a short uh, stint mm -hmm. um but this is very much true to her original design and character um yeah I'm kind of more surprised that she hasn't been utilized more, to be honest with you. But uh, so they're yeah. they're in a museum. Uh, it looks like one of the. Uh, I I assume they put it here for a reason. It shows one of the uh, shows going on in there is the pathways to ancient India. Mm -hmm. So I would assume like whatever thing that she picked up, whatever this artifact is, might tie to ancient India. Sure. It was a little... I don't know. I feel like it's going to get explained more, but for what it is, I enjoyed it. I think that there's some improvements here and there, but for the for the most part, I'm still I'm still enjoying it. I think the fight was pretty good. I like it was action. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, DC Dead well, Planet finish this... Sorry? Oh, I just wanted to make one more comment uh, for the... Yeah. Uh, in the Ebony Web, uh, the uh, club that she goes into, she... she uh, the lady she goes to see, she calls her Aunt Nancy, which I think is great because Anansi, the <laughs> oh yeah, that's great. The uh, Spider God. Oh man, I'm dumb for missing that. Yeah, uh, it reminded me of like American Gods, Mister Nancy. Yes, but I, I that's so great that they could work that in Aunt Nancy. Yep, yep, yep. Nancy. 
that, that well, works because that's so actually much an African gun specific too. Yeah, so that, that works ties so in. much. Well, I mean, as a female, that works so much better than like Mr. Nancy, Mr. Nancy. Even. Yeah, like, absolutely. Aunt Nancy. Uh, it's right there in front of you. You should have been doing a woman for any kind of an Anzi version from, you know, the start. I think it's always like a male or whatnot, but. Well, I think because in the original stories, it's always portrayed that, or, or assumed that Anansi is male. Uh, I don't, yeah. I, though I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the only thing I wanted to comment on that. Well, I'm happy you brought it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so as well this week, DC Dead Planet finished off, which was, it's been a lot of fun. Um, this ended with sort of a little tease. We're getting a third series. Well, not a tease, but a foreshadowing. Okay. Because have any of you read Deceased? Yeah, I haven't Is finished this, a, this uh, one yet, though. So Dead Planet, that's a Batman comic? It's DC no. Universe. Okay. It's their version of like Marvel the, Zombies. Uh... Oh, okay. I thought this was the... Uh... This is Scott Snyder, right? Tom, Tom Taylor. Taylor. Tom Taylor. Okay. Oh, I must be confusing, like... With some oh, you're, you're thinking of uh, Last Night on Earth. Yeah, I thought that was part of Dead Planet. Really? I don't know why, man. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Who knows, man? That's okay, man. Me too. Yeah. Yes. So this finished off really well. I won't go into spoilers because Ty hasn't finished it. But um, yeah, we got the end and like they sort of had the final page had like the sun sort of ominously looming in the background because Superman's like in there consuming the solar energy so it's just sort of teasing that's where the third series is going to go um which is going to be interesting yeah but yeah it's been a lot of fun cool. uh, i also read future state shazam which was interesting it's um justice league detroit i think and okay. um basically shazam has gone a little bit dark a little bit broody and the character's wondering why and then as it goes on we find out he's been killing um criminals oh and we find out that billy and shazam have been separated billy is in hell guarding a prisoner oh. and shazam has been sent to earth so he no longer has like the childlike morals mm. oh um was it amazing no but it was it was a fun read it was decent enough i'll give it a read i'll give it a chance uh shazam is one of those characters yep. that i enjoy a lot i wish that there was more people writing him for some god awful yeah. reason they just don't and decide to well, Jeff Johns had dibs on that character. For 15 fucking years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this also sort of let, uh, sprinkled a little bit of groundwork for the horsemen that have been shown up in Flash and Teen Titans Future State. Ah, okay. Cool. Yeah, and also Walking Dead Deluxe number seven came out this week, and I am not a fan of Charlie Adlard's artwork coloured. Well, early on, sure, but... Uh... His artwork style has evolved a lot. I did not I, like it at first. Yeah, I, like I'm sure if it was drawn to be coloured, it would look a lot better. But the fact that his artwork relied so heavily on shadows in that book, it was black and white with a lot of shadows. Mm -hmm. It just, it's like the colouring's done a good job, but it's just, I don't think it suits the art style he was going for at the time. No, probably not at the time. I feel like Tony Moore is able to do that because he's it, just it naturally... It was a lot more comic book -y, a lot more cartoon. Yeah. Adler is an artist who had to kind of solidify the... He had to solidify his wrist style, I think. And I think that it's it's worked out well in his favor because he's become one of the better artists in the industry, in my opinion. Yeah, um, he is really good. But that early stuff, early on, this is why I like Kirkman, is because he recognizes just the quality of an artist somebody can be, and then he says, you're working with me, I know where the, where this is going. That's why I'm excited for Oblivion Song, is because that stuff is messy at first, but I know for a fact that that artist is going to come out of it and become so much, like, ten times better, and I'm so excited for that. Yeah, cool. Does anyone else have anything they want to show out? Uh, no, not that I can think of. Uh, I think we read all of the uh, future states stuff that we did, and then that's about did you... it. Legion, did I finish this week? Uh, my shop wasn't able to order it, so I, uh, I wanted to talk about it, but unfortunately, I know. All right. I had uh, the first issue of Maestro, War and Pax. Uh, so this is a continuation of just Maestro. It's, uh, I think, mostly a lead up to uh, Future Imperfect Hulk. Created mm -hmm. by Peter David. 
Peter David's writing this as well. So it's, you know, him working on his creation. They changed artists for this one. Now it's Javier Pena. Javier Pena. 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 Uh, the, art, the art's pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of detail here. Uh, so uh, Hulk's taken over what's left of New York and has basically said, I'm taking over the world. <laughs> you know, if you're not with me, you're against me. Um, killing pretty indiscriminately. He's got his army of clones. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. This sounds like uh, sounds like Star Wars. It, like they're just redoing Star Wars. There's he's got his own clone army. He's Star Wars starring Hulk. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he goes to DC, tries to take over that uh, bunker. The city, not the, com the comic company. Yeah, yeah, Washington DC. He fights uh, Machine Man, uh, Aaron Stack, and they fight off. But it was just a. Uh, copy of himself so he's flying everybody else out uh to another safe haven of some sort uh and then uh we get glimpses of other people uh so we've seen little collections of uh what's left in this wasteland and somewhere the pantheon another peter david uh creation that the pantheon is hiding out somewhere mm-hmm Ulysses, Atalanta. Uh, who else is in that? I like Peter David. I actually need uh, to hop Achilles. on some more of this. For some reason, Hercules is not part of the Pantheon. You know, he's his own thing in the Marvel Universe. But mm -hmm. Hercules is dead now from the previous whatever. And knocking on the door of the Pantheon's hideout is Doctor Doom. So Doctor Doom is going to be introduced here traditional dr doom or newer dr doom uh, i don't know it's just one page of him okay it, it... okay they're Here. under some ice caps in columbia josh i have a question for you yeah are you reading immortal hulk at all i'm not i'm surprised by that with how much you enjoy the maestro story arcs yeah i i mean i like him he appears in different things i he was in uh the uh what was the uh, old man Logan? He appeared in the old man Logan, right? Uh, run, I I don't know. I just didn't know that he was in that. Uh, I liked Future and Perfect. That was one of those graphic novels that they had at you know my local library back in the nineties. Sure, I guess it's less that Ma Maestro doesn't show up in Immortal Hulk as far as I've seen so far. Oh, okay, uh, but they deal with the different very varieties of Hulk within the Immortal yeah. Hulk storylines. Yeah. And I think that you would really appreciate it. Yeah. I, I, I've looked through a lot of that stuff, you know, the, the red Hulk or the, uh, what's, what's the, uh, skull or something for the sad Hulk. <laughs> Scar. Maybe. I don't know. It's been a while since I've looked up this stuff. Okay. Like a blue uh, Hulk or something like when I was Hulk Hulk's out. You. Do you want me? I have the uh, trades. If you'd be interested, I can send some to you. No, nah, I can find them. Okay. Yeah, cool. I, I'm working on finding. Uh, you talked about doing House of M and Avengers Disassembled, so I'm working on finding that as well. I would love to talk to you guys about that because I know yeah. for a f well, I feel it in my bones that Wanda. Yeah, I've always tied wanted to, part. you know, read House of M, but I just never got around to it. Um, I think that there's a lot of people who have had some valid criticisms when it comes to Bendis. That storyline in my opinion is one of his best strengths and i okay. love it all right do you guys have any other comics or is that a i, I think, think that's that it. was it for me yeah great cool hey there's the show we did it we talked got through it all guys seven hours later and we did it um well at that point i guess we're gonna sign off uh my name is tyler uh you can find me at tch brand on twitter sean uh, you can find me on twitter at sean Moore 747 josh uh, just josh I'll, you'll find me somewhere eventually. <laughs> I'm just Josh, man. That's all I am, bro. A, We're all just riding a, the wind. Yeah, what a shit name. Why is that a shit? Wait a minute. Just is your last name Craven? Yeah. <gasps> I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, and I'm not, shit no, names, I think, man. I'm, Everyone's always like, oh, man, I'm just joshing you. I'm just, just joshing you. And then there's always that one, uh, that one point in the school year uh, when I don't know, probably like sophomore English. They whatever, 
day they make it to that vocab list that has Craven in it. Like, do you know what your name means, man? I don't know what your name means. Tell me. It's it's like cowardly. Is that really what it means? Yeah. Do you know oh. the number of times in this past four years that anyone has described the previous administration as cravenly? And Josh. never before that first four years. Josh. Yeah. My, I'm named after a fucking Peanuts comic book character. I don't want to hear it from you. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I'm going to end the podcast there, Wait, guys. Is your Thanks name for... actually Charlie? My middle name's Charles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm named after my dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks oh, for yeah, watching. My dad's thanks pretty for... creative too. I will fucking fight you. I'm entrending the podcast, you son of a bitch. <laughs> so next week we have. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you both. Uh, that's the podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. S- click to subscribe. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Breaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, all of the stuff. Uh, we're going through Anchor.fm, so you can also find us on there. Check out the RSS feed. Like and subscribe, obviously, but share us around a little bit as well. Uh, and if you want to give us a dollar, give us a dollar. Thank you, guys. Give us a dollar. Give us a dollar. <laughs> All, right. All hail. Thanks for listening.